Hey. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Um, uh, welcome to a chill stream. Chill codes. We're going to be hanging out. We're going to be hanging out, writing some code. Um, that's a whole, yeah, I appreciate you. That's a whole lot of no sound. <laughs> people people let me know when, uh, when something's up. <laughs> oh, somebody made a, a Jeopardy Twitch game? Yeah, Freak Zombie said they made a Jeopardy for Twitch game thanks to my videos. Nice. Yeah, we've done a lot of stuff with the chat. I feel like maybe we should do something with the chat today. But yeah, we're going to it's going to be chill. Some points of the stream make it hectic, but for the most part we're going to attempt to maintain our chill. Um if you check out the working on document, there's a few different things I have on the list. Yeah. <laughs> This is true, Infi. It's a recursive definition, but it'll eventually get you to this page, which talks about what we're going to be working on. Uh, we're going to start off with an algorithm or data structure of the day, like right now, within the next 72 seconds. That's going to happen. Uh, then we're going to do some code katas. We'll do some Clash of Code, which is a fun competitive programming game. And then after that, we'll do a coding challenge of some kind. We'll figure out an app to build, but I'm going to try to build it in 30 minutes or less, or it's free, and that's my guarantee. So let's do a quick, not, not, I, mean, I guess we won't do a poll, but just let me know in the chat, what is a, uh, a data structure or an algorithm you would like to see me implement? It, it should be something uh, fairly basic so that it can be approachable for beginners. And because I don't, I don't know, I'm going to have to look it up, whatever we decide. And I want to be able to do it within like 10 minutes or so. So uh, binary search tree, too hard. We could do some sort of sort if you name a sort. Uh, bubble. We've done bubble sort before. Um, I mean, one thing, like if you if you if you don't suggest it, I might just do it. Is implementing a queue. Uh, so we'll implement a queue data structure that has an on queue and a DQ method. We've done quick sort before. I don't know. I I kind of want to stay away from trees today. <laughs> implement a hash table. Why do you always suggest the most difficult things? A union find. <laughs> Ternary search? A directed graph? Listen, I'm just a guy. I write a lot of JavaScript, okay? I mean, I could do it, but I, I'm, this is something I'm not prepared for. We're going to do it on the spot, so. A DQ. <laughs> Circular queues are easy to implement and fast. A circular queue? Well, I would implement a queue and then we could make it circular. No offense, chat, but your suggestions are bad. <laughs> you should feel that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a queue. Give me one other suggestion. We'll, we'll at least let you vote on it. We'll implement a queue. Um, or something similar. GraphQL is pretty cool. I don't use it, but it's cool. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to search the web for uh, data structures and algorithms. And hey, uh, Strategy3MDC, thank you for that prime sub. We also got um, uh, a seven-month resub from Danielle earlier. And just now, Mr. Sh uh, Shafayet with the 50 bits who says, how to master JavaScript. Practice, practice. Uh, John jo W. George with that seven-month resub. The Oompa Loompa worker subscribed with Prime when I wasn't streaming. So that's pretty cool. I appreciate you all for the supports. Um, data. I'm going to search for data structure <laughs> and algorithms. Uh, data structures and algorithms tutorial. Tutorialspoint.com. Search, sort, insert, update, delete. Round robin. You know, yeah, I, you know, I don't even. I don't even know why I give you all. <laughs> give you all the options because you're probably going to watch anyways right can i get a smile in the chat if you're ready to see me implement a queue <laughs> uh, if you do exclamation mark keyboard in the chat you can get a link to my keyboard and hey i'm space ducks thank you for that two month resub there we go everybody's ready let's go let's go okay so we're going to check out this wikipedia article a queue and abstract data type and hey nessie thank you for the 10 month resub Three month streak. That's awesome. I appreciate the support. Alrighty, um, I'm gonna do this in a way that makes it um, so that I can clip it and put it on YouTube because people like content. Yeah, so shot in the dark with that content drop. 
<laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Um, let me uh, let me get a little directory ready. Uh, algorithm of I mean, like this technically isn't an algorithm. This is a data structure, but we're still gonna call it algorithm of the day. Andrew with the eleven months, I appreciate you, friend. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're gonna make a directory for Q. Q. All right, who's ready? Let's go. Yeah, I got some battle styles yesterday, big. And actually, I mean, I wasn't gonna pull this out, but I've got a Pultigeist um, Shining Fates pin collection. I'm gonna open up at some point in the stream today. Uh, but yeah, I got a uh, the Urshifu uh, V Single Strike box, and I got the Venusaur V Max uh, battle box yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking about that. We're gonna talk about code. All right, is everybody ready? Is everybody ready? Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do like a. We're gonna try to implement this in within 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Bob with the thousand bitties. This is hello YouTube's. Check out the Twitch channel. Thank you, Bob, for those bits. Uh, we'll leave that in the video. That's gonna be in the in the video. <laughs> uh, focus. Start. 12 minutes. We can do this in 12 minutes. Here we go. Hello, friends. Well, I mean, I guess you're already watching the video, but hello. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. In this video, we are going to attempt to implement a Q data structure. Now, I have not prepared this, but I have gone to school for computer science, so I did this a long time ago, and I learned about it a long time ago. Uh, but we're going to implement it and talk about it. So um, let's read the, the Wikipedia definition, and then we'll write some, some code to actually implement it. So in computer science, a queue is a collection of entities that are maintained in a sequence and can be modified by the addition of entities at one end of the sequence and removal of entities from the other end of the sequence. By convention, the end of the sequence at which elements are added is called the back, the tail, or the rear of the queue. And the end at which elements are removed is called the head or the front of the queue. Now, and thank you, Rablin, for that sub. This, there's a, a beautiful depiction of a queue. And a queue um, is just, oh, so in the, in the US we call it a line, right? When, you, when you're, you're going to the movies, pre-pandemic, I guess people are going to the movies again, slowly. Um, but you stand in line to buy a ticket, right? The first person in line is going to be the first person that's going to get to buy a ticket. Um, or in, in my case, <laughs> you're going to the store to buy Pokemon cards and the vendor just stock the shelves and you have to stand in line because there's many of you and they need to make sure it's nice and orderly and there's only one person at a time getting product. That's a queue. You get at the front, first person in the queue or in the line uh, is, is the first person that gets to uh, do make a purchase or do what, whatever else. And so when that person enters into the line or into the enter, is, enters into the queue, that is known as an on queue, right? And if there's already a line, if there's already uh, 10 people in line, the next person that gets in line gets at the back, right? Because they were there last, they slept on it, they weren't <laughs> the first in line. Um, so that's an on queue, right? You get into the back of the line. And then uh, when a person is ready to be served or, or what, whatever, analogy you want to use the when you're pulling something off of the front that is a dq and kick you 2ka thank you for the bits uh yeah we're in a hype train which i appreciate you all for very much appreciated um cool so this is a q and uh it's useful it's very useful um and someone in the chat mentioned it but it is a a fifo a first in first out q so uh the first thing into the q is going to be the first thing that is uh, DQ'd. Uh, this is in contrast to LIFO, which is last in, first out. So a while back, we talked about a stack data structure. Uh, and in a stack data structure, the last thing to enter the stack is actually the, the next thing to be popped off, which is different. It's It stacks, and then you have to pull them off the top, whereas these uh, are in line and, get, and they come in from the back. All right, let's write some code. A soldier, thank you for that sub. Um, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for some code. So we're just, we're gonna use JavaScript for this. Uh, I'm gonna create a file called run.js, and this is this file is actually going to use this queue that uh, that we create. Um, so eventually we're gonna have like a queue. Uh, class. It's, we're going to be able to create instances of a queue, um, and uh, we're going to pull that in from a file that doesn't exist yet, which is just queue, queue.js, and Nadles, thank you for that two-month resub. Woo! 
Woo, Q U E U E Q. Um, cool. So this hasn't been defined yet, but eventually it will be there and we can bring it in. Uh, and then we should be able to do things like this. Now, I always use Pokemon as an example, but I like Pokemon. Pokemon's on the brain. Um, <laughs> not a Q, a Q. Um, so we're going to have a uh, line of purchasers. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be Pokemon. And Elon Musk with the 10 bits. Do you remember me? For yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> What's up, Elon? Are you talking to the people watching on YouTube? Yeah, they remember you. Okay, um, I'm going to call these the Pokemon Purchasers. And this is going to be a queue, right? We're going to create an instance of a queue. Now, uh, like Wikipedia mentioned, there are a couple of methods. One of them is on queue. So we want to put something into the queue. So I'm going to say Pokemon Purchasers dot on queue. Q, Q, <laughs> on queue. CJ. So look, I'm at the front of the line. All right. And then uh, we got Elon Musk, who's second in line. Um, and we got Doc, who's third in line. And we got Andrew, who is fourth in line. We're all ready to buy us some Pokemon cards, but we have to do it nice and orderly. I'm gonna be first, Elon's gonna be second, Doc's gonna be third, and Andrew's gonna be the fourth person to make a purchase. Now, um, so we can on cue these things in into the queue. And uh, what should happen is be because we called this on queue in a specific order, uh, when we dequeue, we should get them back in a specific order. Um, so if we log uh, po Pokemon purchasers dot DQ, Q U E U D Q, uh, because this is the first time we're dequeuing, we should get back CJ. And then if we dequeue again, we should get Elon Musk. If we dequeue again, we'll get Doc. And lastly, if we dequeue, we'll get Andrew. All right. Oh, that would be if we hook it up to Twitch chat. <laughs> you all could get into the queue. Um, yeah, and I mean, so and uh, Niall, thank you very much for that prime sub. Uh, I mean, I haven't I haven't yet talked about where this is potentially useful, but um, queues are used in the, uh, all over the place in computer science. Um, if you've ever tried to buy a graphics card, like on on BestBuy.com, uh, they use a queue. Uh, because so many people want to buy them, they don't want the bots to buy them up, so you actually have to get into a queue. The first person in the queue is going to be the first person that has the chance to purchase, and then once they're done purchasing, then the next person in the queue comes up. Um, uh, they, they do a similar... Oh yeah, like, uh, uh, like uh, you, whenever you're playing an online game, um, you actually get into a queue of players that are wanting to get paired up. Yeah, cues are all over the place, but let's, let's make this code work, right? Right now, this is just dream code. I wrote this code... Um, expecting that we have this queue data structure with these two methods, but we don't. We have to actually write that ourselves. Um, so let's do it. So we need a file, uh, queue.js. Uh, we'll do it with a lowercase q. Q, Q U E U E. Um, and then we're going to create a class. So a class is kind of like a blueprint. It lets us define how this data structure uh, or how this this object will behave. And in this case, we have two methods. We have the onQueue method. Um, so this is going to be a function that we can call with some data that we want to onQueue. And we have dQ. D I'm, I'm going to spell it wrong at some point. <laughs> and uh, at some point, we're going to dQ, which is going to get the data out of the queue. Um, and then uh, we define this queue here. We want to make it available over here so we can do this require thing. So we're just going to export it. And downtown Rob, thank you for the prime sub. Uh, Q, 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 Q. <laughs> thank you for the sub as well. <laughs> okay, um, so we're exporting it, which means we can use it over here. Uh, right now, our methods are doing nothing, right? They're completely and totally empty. We have to actually implement them. Um, and let's call this item for the on queue. So uh, what we need in this data structure is some sort of uh, internal uh, in internal place to store things, right? I Rossum with the five gifted subs. Thank you so much. You all are too kind. Wait, wait, so much support today. I really appreciate you. Okay, uh, but we, we need some sort of internal way of storing the items in the queue and an internal way of getting them out of the queue. Um, I think I'm just going to use an array. I mean, an array has built-in methods. Um, you know what? I won't. I'm going to I'm going to use an I'm going to use an object. I'm going to use an object. So I'm going to say this dot data is an empty object. And I'll say this dot uh, current I 
guess we could say head. So um, it mentioned that we have uh, properties on it, um, like the back or the tail, and then the front, which is the head. Um, so I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to say that the tail is nothing. And uh, the uh, head is nothing. I mean, so I'm using an object here. Like, technically, I could use a linked list. Because when you think about it, this is like a list of items linked together. And then when you put in, when you on queue, you just insert at the back of the list. And then whenever you DQ, you just pull off the front of the list. Yeah. A circular queue, a fixed length array with start and end indices and wrap wrap around. Um, use a linked list, but that means I would have to pull in a linked list library or implement one from scratch. <laughs> and that's not what this video is about. Um, we, I'm just I'm just gonna use I'm gonna figure out how to just use this object. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, Link lists are bad. <laughs> Chris Amater, thank you for the sub. Use a string and a semicolon to separate them. I mean, that's actually a totally valid way to do it. Give me 10 seconds to decide how I'm actually going to do this. The, the, here's the thing. We could just use an array, right? We, but the thing is, and arrays in JavaScript already have methods like this built in. So if I want to put something at the end of the array, um, it's actually just push. And if I want to remove something from the beginning of the array, it's just uh, shift. So uh, the thing is, if we use an array, it's just simple. We're just, we're just done, honestly. <laughs> this is all it would take. Um, but uh, so if I run this code, um, it works, right? It works. Um, but I don't. I don't want to do this. I want. I want to figure out some way of uh, storing the data ourselves somehow, like in an object or something like that. I feel like if we put our data in there, um, and we have um, like a a pointer, like to. Um, the most recently inserted. <laughs> I'm lost now. I'm lost too. What am I doing with my life? Jake at you. What's up, friend? Thank you for the eight month resub. Can we get a shout out for Jake at you? I'm stalling. I'm stalling. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, at that point, I'm creating a linked list. I mean, here's what I'm thinking, like tail index and like head index and then we also we have we actually also have the head and the tail but then it's a linked list yeah in a way <laughs> but i could say this dot uh, current index is zero something like this the size the size or the length starts off at zero Yeah, at that point it's just an array, but blank. Uh, thank you very much for that primary sub. This this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna set this set it like this. So when we on queue something, we are going to um, will this work? Yeah, I mean then I'd have to like shift everything over. Oh, let's just implement it this way. We're gonna implement it this way because I need to be done with this. So I have the size of the queue, which starts off as zero, and I have my my data, which is initially an object. In JavaScript, an object is kind of like a hash map or a dictionary. We'll figure it out. Uh, but when I on queue something, I'm gonna say this dot data at this dot size equals the item. And thank you all for that hype train. Very much appreciated. So what that will do is that will put it into the, the object where the key is the current size and uh, the value is the item itself. Um, when we need when we want to DQ, we need to take the item at zero. So we actually need to return this.data at zero. And then we need to take everything else and shift it uh, and change its index, right? We need to shift everything up, uh, shift everything else up so that it is uh, moved up by one. Um, so 
Yeah, I'll say uh, item is the thing at the front, the thing at index zero. And then we're going to uh, delete this.data at zero. So we're going to remove it from the, from the hash map or from the object. Um, and then we need to iterate over the rest of the keys and change their, um, their, their basically their, their pointer, <laughs> their, their, their item ID to be um, one less because everything shifts up. Avoid the need to shift with a start index. I guess so. So instead of size, I just have, um, well, I guess I need size and start index. OK, I like this. I like this. Yeah, now it's a circular queue. <laughs> OK, um, so when we insert something, we want to put it at the end. So this makes sense, right? And then after we've uh, unqueued it, the size um, gets incremented by 1, because now we're, we're, uh, we're one size bigger, or what, one, one more item bigger. Um, and then when we DQ, um, we can say um, we need to get this dot data at uh, this dot start index, and so the start index starts at zero, which is correct. Uh, we then uh, can remove it and then increment the start index by, by one. And then lastly, we return the item. Okay, this is this will do it. Same way. Okay, <laughs> done. <laughs> Um, yeah, we could call this length. We could call this size. I think I'm done. I have I've spent enough time rambling. There are a million ways to implement it, but this is how we've decided to implement it. We have this uh, basically a, a map which has IDs and values. Uh, we have a, we're keeping track of the total size, meaning the, the number of items in our queue. Um, we're keeping track of where it has start, where it currently is started, because whenever we dequeue something, we need to change that start index to be the next item in the queue. Uh, when we onqueue it, we just put it into our, our object at the current size, because uh, there will be nothing there to begin with. And then we increment the size, so the next time we onqueue something, it just goes at the, the next, uh, at size plus one, basically. And then when we dequeue, we access the item. Uh, then this syntax here removes it from the object. I mean, technically, we don't really even need this. We, it could just stick around forever, but then we could we'd run into like some memory leaks potentially, or like we're not using that data anymore, so we should remove it. Um, we increment the start index because now the thing we just dequeued was at that index, and the next time we dequeue, we want the one that was after that and then we return the item. This is a queue. There's a million and one ways to implement it. People are talking about um, using plus plus um, instead of plus equals, or right here you could do this dot size plus plus. I, I, don't, I don't like this. I mean, tech, this should work. I don't like it. <laughs> the reason being is uh, you have to know what this means, and what this means is access the current value of this property which is at the first time it's zero, and then increment it. Um, but that's kind of confusing for a lot of people, so I like to be explicit with it. But if you delete it, why does the start index matter? Uh, because I'm storing elements at different indices. Um, what we can do is actually if we just log uh, this.data each time we unqueue something. So when we unqueue the first time, the key is zero, the value is CJ. When we unqueue the second time, the key is one, the value is Elon Musk. So the thing is, every time we unqueue, uh, the uh, key of that item increments, which is which is why. Um, wait, what what was the question? Why does the start index matter? Which is why the start index matters. Yeah, yeah, um, because uh, each time I put something new in there. I mean, technically, once if I if I were to dequeue everything, I could restart my start index uh, to zero if I really wanted to. I don't know. I'm done. Hopefully you learned something. I'm going to leave you with this Wikipedia article. Um, like I guess like I showed, there are, I mean, I didn't really show it, but I kind of talked about it. There are a million and one ways how you could implement this. What really matters is how the outside world uses your data structure, and it has a, um, a predictable behavior, right? When I on queue something that's going to the front, or sorry, it's going to the back of the queue. When I dequeue, I'm getting the thing from the front. This this is the code that 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 needs to behave in a specific way. How you actually implement each of these methods is totally up to you. It comes down to like performance, um, code style, a lot of different things. 
Um, I showed you could implement this with an array if you really wanted to. That code was arguably easier to understand than this, but regardless, I'm done. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Thanks for learning about queues. Um, and we're gonna move on now. So <laughs> everybody say bye, YouTube. Uh, we have this one, coding content. Okay. On queue and DQ should have a uh, big O of one. Yeah, and I guess ours do, um, uh, meaning uh, uh, constant time operation, right? They they don't have to search through the 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 queue to do the thing. Cool. All right. Um, What's next? We need to say hi to everybody. I'll show you all, um, I'll, I'll introduce you to the stream because I feel like we have a lot of new people here today. Um, wait, what, YouTube is gone? What do you mean? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I'm premiering a video on YouTube right now. Yeah, 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 the coding improv from a few weeks ago. That's me. There's 98 people watching on YouTube. What are you do? What are you doing? Come to Twitch. <laughs> okay, um, let's uh, let's introduce you to the stream. So. My name is CJ. If you're new here, I appreciate you being here. We've got we've gotten already 44 follows since the stream started. Hi, welcome. Um, what you just witnessed was uh, an algorithm of the day. We, we implemented the on queue and DQ methods in a queue. That was fun. Uh, and hey, Const Dave, thank you for the sub. I saw, I saw that you Discord messaged me. I haven't read it yet though, but I'll check it out. But what's up, Const Dave? Thank you very much for the sub. Thank you all for that hype train too. Blank with the five month prime resub. Uh, Jake headed you with the eight month resub. Uh, resub. Uh, Chris Amater with the with the sub. I Rossum with the five gifted subs earlier. Very much appreciated. Okay, um, I'm going to show you the drop game. So in the chat, you can type exclamation mark drop me, and uh, that will drop your avatar from the sky, just like that. So that's me. And if it lands in the garden, just like Andrew did a little bit ago, uh, you'll get yourself a little seedling and your name on the screen for a few seconds. Tim, with a beautiful drop. Look at, look at that big, beautiful seedling. Great job, Tim. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Henrique. Henrique, great job. Great drops. We're getting, we're getting some amazing. King Coding, we got Papalo. Wow, wow. Okay, so you can you can do that throughout the stream. Um, the other thing is you see some cool stuff in my overlay. So uh, Chris Griffin, hello, uh, Chris Griffin, who says never lucky. You'll, 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 you'll land there one day. Um, Chris Griffin has their pronoun set. So you can see that he prefers the pronouns he, him, and his. Um, he has his country set to the United States, so I know he's from the US. And he has his team badge set to JavaScript. Uh, let's see who else we got. Coding Pasta uh, has he, him, and his. They have the Switzerland flag, and they're on Team Vue.js. Uh, Mod has the India flag and the Firefox logo. Uh, Al Mister is from France and has the view logo. So you too, you too can set those things in your chat messages. Um, so for the team badges, you can go to this website, uh, the Font Awesome brand cheat sheet. So basically any brand that is on this page, you can set as your team badge. And what am I gonna choose today? Let's see. I, I don't like they never they've haven't added Pokemon. I know you can actually oh I believe you can open a pull request on their repo to get new things added. But they don't have Pokemon. I'm gonna use Grunt, which is a build tool that not really anybody uses anymore. But it's a little uh what, what a warthog? It's a warthog, right? And he looks like a Pokemon. David with the bits. Uh sorry to interrupt, but what do you use to convert links into tags in the chat? Overlay. Oh, a markdown parser. Yeah. So um, uh, various markdown parsers will, um, uh, when they see a link, instantly turn it into a link. And so, um, yeah, th this is my. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. <laughs> this is this is gonna be my logo because um, he looks like a Pokemon, kind of. Uh, so to set your your team badge, if you do exclamation mark team, uh, followed by anything from that page. Um, that will uh, set it. Yeah, and, and David, if you check out the um, 
Is it the API repo? It might be my front end repo. Actually, I'll show you that code really quick because because I feel like it. And David is a great person, and I appreciate them. And they're a mod here, and they sometimes stream. I don't know if you've streamed recently, but that definitely check out David. Um, and also, uh, uh, dis stream chat. I can never, is is this the right website? This is the one. So uh, David actually works on an overlay that looks very similar to mine, uh, but anybody can use it on their stream, or you can use it to mod streams as well. So check that out if you like. If you like an over, if you like this overlay, you're gonna love <laughs> to stream chat. Um, let me see really quick. <laughs> I, I am addicted to Pokemon. I will admit it. Yeah, I'll show you how to set the pronouns in just a second. Let me find my markdown parsing code. Um, sanitize message. So I'm using Showdown. Showdown. Uh, there are a lot of different markdown parsers out there. I think this one was recommended by Imphi, who's another mod here on the channel. Um, and I believe it just parses links by default, but you can actually pass in some options to say whether, you're not, you, whether or not you want links to turn into links. Cool, so that's how you set your team badge. If you wanna set your country, you can do exclamation mark country, and um, it usually works better if you use your two character country code. So for me, it's the US. Um, I think USA might work or Mexico might work, but it's guaranteed to work if you do your two character country code. So that'll, that'll set your country flag like that. Um, and then you can set your pronouns too. I'll let everyone finish setting that and then we'll talk about pronouns. <laughs> Dario, I should be studying, but here I am. Just put me on in the background and uh, use it as motivation to study, I guess. I mean, it'd probably be distracting. I don't know. Have I used Kubernetes? Not really. Um, I've dabbled. I haven't used it in any official projects or anything like that. And Mart is playing piano. Very good, very good. Okay, um, if you want to set your pronouns, these are your options. You can do she, he, they, they, co, none, they, hi, it, one, m, or yo. So pick from this list, and in the chat, do exclamation mark pronoun, uh, your preferred pronouns, and uh, those will show up next to your messages, just like that. Yeah. Silently watching during a work meeting. <laughs> My hand motions uh, on cue, DQ. That's nice. <laughs> Good to hear, <laughs> Um, Okay, and what else? What else? You can set your status. So you can see that Cookies and Cream has a status of on my bike, going to the moon. Diamond hands, baby. I mean, it may not be what you mean by that, but <laughs> and you can see my status is I bought Pokemon cards today, which is actually not true. So I need to uh, set my status. So in the chat, you can do uh, set status um, and specify your status. My status is straight chillin'. And then we'll just do a, a little snowflake. Um, and then you can see that will appear on all of my messages. Now, your status should be appropriate. It should be safe for work. If it's not, you'll be timed out, potentially banned. Be nice. Be kind. Um, yeah, that's totally fine. <laughs> Mixed banking. <laughs> Waiting to have TypeScript to be a team badge. The, Nether the Netherlands is very nice. Cool. All right, um, I think that's it. We used to have some other stuff going on, but all of that is not here. I prefer, for personal projects and stuff on stream, I prefer JavaScript. At work, I use TypeScript because uh, the code is worked on by multiple people, uh, potentially other people work on it in the future, and uh, Kurz Rinium, thank you for that Prime sub. So. Uh, TypeScript is like self-documenting code. It, it makes sense for projects with lots of people. When it's just me on stream building random stuff, JavaScript is way more fun and way more uh, fit for purpose. Um, all right, all right, all right. Let's uh, let's do a code kata. Um, hey, awaited. Thank you for that nine-month resub. Um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, Code Wars, Code Wars. Uh, is a wonderful website where you can practice. Pick five. 
<laughs> now I'm just gonna do uh, the thing is I say two I'll end up only doing one because what we usually do what we usually do is we solve the problem in multiple ways like at least five different ways uh, and so it's really it's a really nice tool to, uh, for me to show you a lot of different features of JavaScript and a lot of different ways of thinking about how to solve problems and such uh, let me log in really quick um, if you're interested in Code Wars, or uh, I mean, if you're interested in, in getting better at programming, <laughs> the Code Wars is great. Um, I think we have a link. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just shared that in the chat um, to Code Wars. You can't see it anymore, but there's a link to a YouTube playlist. Actually, I'll just show you on my screen because we have the technology. So. <laughs> Um, this specific playlist right here is a, a list of all the passcode Kata's episodes. I used to do like a, a, a every Wednesday, we'd, we'd do a, a few hours of solving these kinds of problems, but I don't really do that anymore. We'll get back to it one day. But the very first video in this playlist is uh, basically how to sign up on the website, and I give you like a tour of the website. So if you if you get lost with anything that I'm doing, feel free to check out this playlist, and uh, you, can, you can learn how to sign up. Um, Cool. Let's go. I need to sign in. Give me one, ju just a moment. Um, I don't think you can delete your status. You can just maybe set it to be a space. That might break it. Or I mean, that might not do nothing. Set it to be an emoji. <laughs> Where has this channel been all along? What's up, Entropy Jock? I've been right here all, all along. Um, oh, cool. That was, well, that was easy. I'm logged in. And uh, actually, I will give you a tour of the website. So uh, basically, katas are split into different difficulties. 8Q is actually the easiest, and 1Q is the hardest. Now, we've done we've done a few 1Qs on stream, but they usually take me multiple streams to solve. They're pretty complex problems. I'm, a, I'm an OK programmer. I'm not a genius or anything. I can sort of kind of solve them, but it takes me a while. It takes me a while. Uh, 8 and 7Q are very good for uh, for beginners. I, I would say before you start on a website like this, you should know uh, the, the basics of programming. Um, you should know conditionals, loops, functions, um, variables, string manipulation, array manipulation, that kind of thing. You should know the basics, and then you can use what you know about the basics to try and, and solve uh, these problems. And you can actually use many different programming languages. Um, I prefer JavaScript. But you can you can use many different ones, uh, and so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go. Uh, we'll do we'll do two today. We're gonna start with an eight Q, which should be fairly easy. We should get it done pretty quick, and then we'll jump into a seven Q, which will be a, a, a little. It'll be easy, but there will, maybe there'll be some complexities to it. So we're gonna start with eight Q. Um, I'm gonna sort by. Here, here's another hot tip: sort by most completed. Uh, and Mr. Zax, thank you for that prime sub. Um, but uh, these are user submitted coding problems. And um, a lot of the times, it's hard even understanding what the problem is asking you to do, um, which can be frustrating. But if you sort by most completed, you're more likely to find problems that other people have solved because they were able to understand the problem description. Um, so <laughs> I sort by most completed. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to choose katas that I have not trained on. So these will be coding problems that I've never seen before. Um, so we can do it. Who's ready? Who's ready? Um, what does her sheet say? Can you try this? Because this is easy and fun. Maybe we'll do it later. Sort by set bit count. Entropy jock with the sub. Thank you very much. <laughs> too kind. You're too kind. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, well, let, uh, well, uh, what, what, what do I do with this? We take this, we minimize it for later, but just remind me and I'll, I'll pull it back up later. All right, uh, let's just look at this first one uh, and we'll decide if we're going to do it. So make a function that will return a greeting statement that uses an input. Your program should return, hello, name. How are you doing today? Weird divide. Thank you very much for that prime resub. Um, this is, I mean, honestly, honestly, this is going to be a very simple problem to solve. But if you're new to programming and new to JavaScript, there's actually a lot we can learn about string concatenation and template strings. Um, so maybe we do this. If you want to see me solve this, smile in the chat. If you don't want to see me solve this, 
frown in the chat. <laughs> I guess I don't really know my audience today. I don't know if there's a lot of like well, extreme beginners or if there are um, more advanced programmers. Some people think, yeah, some people think it's a little bit too easy. I mean, we do see a lot. Okay, here's here's the compromise. We'll not spend more than five minutes on this. We'll get, just get it out the way and then we'll jump into a, a slightly harder problem. Okay, let's go. Let me get ready here. Code katas. Cool. So uh, I've done 60 plus episodes on code katas. I mean, this technically isn't a standalone episode, but we're still going to make a directory for it. Um, episode 61. Oh, wow. I haven't committed in a while. <laughs> I'm slacking. I'm slacking. No, I, I swear. I swear. We're, we are going to legitimately set... Uh, once I get started coding, we're going to legitimately set a five-minute timer, and we're not going to spend more than five minutes on this. But if you're new to programming, this will be your chance to maybe learn something today. Um, what is this thing called? <laughs> Returning strings. Uh, Andrew, are you here? Do you still have that um, uh, Tamper Monkey script that sets the this to be the slug because I don't have it in this browser how about solve it in the most complicated way you can think of that could be fun actually um, we'll solve it the easier way first though all right um, I don't think it matters we'll just create a, a, a file called returning strings a slug is uh, like a use not, not necessarily uh, user friendly but it, it's the thing that appears in the URL so uh, twitch.tv slash coding garden coding garden is the slug or twitch.tv uh, slash kitboga kitboga is the slug um, a lot of different websites use that like if you're on a blog um, it's kind of like an ID but it's sometimes it's mostly human readable if you're on a blog um, the posts for a blog will usually have a slug that matches the title like learn JavaScript in 10 seconds and so learn javascript in 10 seconds is the slug yeah it's a unique identifier <laughs> kitboga is a slug got it okay um yeah and this is more of a unique id than a slug but behind the scenes there actually is a slug uniquely associated with this kata and what i like to do is uh name my files the same as the slug because i have a script that will figure out which katas i've solved based on the name of the file it's irrelevant. What I'll show you is that you can actually write code directly on the website. So if you click on train, um, you can choose your programming language and then you write your code right here. You can see any tests. And then uh, down here, you can click uh, tests to actually run your code. Now, what I prefer to do is bring it down locally because I like to solve it in multiple ways. So, so that's what we're going to do. Um, grab these tests. Yeah. Um, we're going to convert these to console logs just so they're um, nice and easy to run. And then we need a function called greet that takes in a name and then uh, do the thing. It has to do the thing. Um, let me actually do this. Why am I not using ES6 function functions? There's a time and a place for ES6 functions. And uh, top level functions, I don't think are one of them. Um, you can do this. You can. Um, but in, in the olden days, before arrow functions, uh, we had anonymous functions like this. Um, it's anonymous because it doesn't have a name. I mean, it has a name argument, but the function itself isn't named. And I never liked this before arrow functions. And so this is kind of the same thing. But um, if it's a top level function, just make it a function. OK. Um, are you ready, kids? <laughs> Let's go. So what we need to do, what we need to do is we need to, so we're given a name. We get the name Ryan, or we get the name Sh Shingles. Whose name is Shingles? I hope I'm not offending anyone by saying <laughs> whose name is Shingles. We're going to change this to Ed. Um, cool. And we are going to set a five-minute timer. Here we go. No, I, I, we're just starting. We're just starting. Um, so 
we get a name like Ryan or Ed, and we need to create a string that has that name inside of it. So we need to create a string that says, hello name, how are you today? First, I'm gonna do it the uh, the old the old way <laughs> i guess we're going to use string concatenation so basically uh, i need to stick together three different strings three different sets of characters so we're going to have this string which says hello comma we're going to have the string that is passed in which is the name and then we're going to have the string that is the rest of uh, the sentence so our first string is just hello so we can, we can put that inside of a string like this. Now, in, in JavaScript, you can use the plus sign to um, append a string to another string. So if I do name right here, this should say, hello, name. Um, and I'm going to run this code, and we'll see what the output is. Um, we can see, actually, that it's uh, hello, Ryan, hello, Ed. Right? That's, that's what our code is outputting right now. Now, if I want the rest of it, I can put this part in a string and concatenate that on the end. So if I put that in a string, now we have the full string. So we have hello, comma, space, the name that was passed in, plus the string that has space, how are you today? So this is it. We've solved the problem. <laughs> um, I call this the like the old way because we, we didn't we haven't we didn't always have template strings in JavaScript. And before template strings, you kind of had to do string concatenation in this way. Now this gets really messy if you have a lot of strings that you need to smack together um, but uh, for for a few strings this is totally fine all right let me show you a, another way to do this and this is the more modern way this is using template literals um, <laughs> smack it together that's this that's a that's a synonym for um, um, uh, concatenate. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the programming term we, we use is concatenate. So these are, this is string concatenation because we're smacking these strings together. Um, okay, so uh, you can see now that I'm using these little backticks. Uh, and if you're new to programming, you may not know where the backtick is on your keyboard, but it's actually in, uh, at least on the US keyboard, it's on the top left. Uh, what's up, Sai? Welcome to the show. Um, and, and Anna Coates, hello, hello. But uh, you know where the you know the key that has the tilde on it? It has the back tick on it. <laughs> Can we get some back ticks in the chat? Uh, everyone, find your back tick key and give me a, give me a back tick. Um, it's actually really because I, I used to teach beginners and and uh, they couldn't find the back tick key, um, which is totally fine because it's not an often used key. Yeah, look at those back ticks. Nice, nice back ticks. All right, um, but. At this point, we're, we're, you can see that it just says name, because I literally have the word name right here. Now, if I want JavaScript to put a variable right there, I can use some spe special syntax. So I can wrap this in curly braces, give it some money, and what that means is take the variable name, which is either Ryan or Ed, and put that variable inside of this string. And um, that's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a minute and a half left. Um, I guess another way to do this, which is is potentially a way that people used to concatenate a ton of strings, is we can actually um, let's do this. Is we can um, instead of concatenating these things together, we can use array methods to our advantage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array that has all three of the strings inside of it that I need, right? And you can see that right now, this is just returning an array. It's returning a list of three strings, but I don't want a list. I want a single string. And arrays have this built-in method called join. So if I join those strings together, we similarly can, we, we get the output because it's, it, it, this behind the scenes is just doing a concatenation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and technically we could reduce it. <laughs> we could reduce it instead of joining it. How much time? We have 30 seconds. 30 seconds to write or reduce. Let's do it. So um, reduce. We have our result. We have each uh, part. Um, our reducer starts off with an empty string. And each time we need to say uh, result plus part. Is that it? Yeah, we did it. We did it with eight seconds to spare. <laughs> What's up, Paper Fan Games? Welcome to the show. Uh, we are we are talking about some pretty basic string concatenation um, in uh, in JavaScript, but we're done. So this is the 
old way. This is, I would say, the preferred way. If you're, if you're writing JavaScript in 2021, this is probably how you should be concatenating strings. Um, I've, I've done this. I've done this before we had template literals because this gets really cumbersome, especially if you're trying to build up some kind of template or something like that. Um, uh, that could get really cumbersome. And before we had template strings, this is a, a trick I used to make the code a little bit more readable, put a bunch in. Um, and then this is a reduce. And if you want to learn more about reduce, um, there's this, this, this YouTube channel called Coding Garden. <laughs> who has, has done a lot of videos on Reduce. Um, so if you go here, you can learn about that Reduce magic there. OK, now we're moving on. Uh, show the multi. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can show a multi-line template. Um, how does that work? I mean, we're technically out of time, but it's like, I forget the escape character. <laughs> That's another way to do it uh, on. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, JavaScript. Uh, well, th there's a, so actually, I mean, I believe, I believe there, there's actually a way to do, uh, wait, where are we? Th this. Do I have a video called Don't Use Reduce Ever? I probably touch on it uh, in, in a lot of those Reduce videos. Um, it's basically like, you can do it if it makes sense to do it, but it's not going to make you cool. It's gonna, you'll potentially be uh, uh, an unliked programmer on your team. Yeah, this does it. Um, this also is ugly, but it works. So. Um, in, in Java, I, I'll say this, if you're newer to JavaScript, you probably didn't know that you could do this, but this basically allows you to create a multi-line string and it, it does not insert a new line, I, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what is this called? Returning strings. Yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, technically, technically, <laughs> uh, we need this to be the actual variable name. Which doesn't make which makes no sense to use these escape characters. Uh, I modder posted a link. Oh, uh, we already did that. Yeah, that would. I mean, this. So this is this is useful <laughs> if if you have a really long string that you're trying to create and you don't want to have to concatenate together. It's a little bit harder. I mean, technically. Um, you you might as might as well have just done this if you really if you really wanted to, uh, because you if we want to put a variable in there, um, we have to reference the variable name like that. Um, if we run this, that that should work. Wait wait. Oh, and then we need the space there. Yeah. And if you really want new lines, you probably should just use a template literal. Like, uh, that's another cool feature of template literals is they can have as many new lines as you want and they still just work like this. It's beautiful. All right, uh, let, us, let us move on <laughs> to another coding problem. <laughs> I don't know, if you learn something, can I just get, can I get a balloon in the chat? A bit, uh, just a nice, Red balloon. Also, drop some balloons if you learn something today, or learn something in the past ten minutes. I don't know. Uh, thank you for that hydrate and posture engineer. Oh, we have quite a few redemptions. Let me um, do those. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's move on to a. Hey, let's see about this. Let's see about these reverse words. And actually, I never plugged my code into uh, into the problem here. So let's go ahead and I'll show you that it, it should work. So um, if I had to choose one solution out of all of these that I wrote, I'd probably go with the template literal. This is this is this is the way. This is the w the way to do it. Um, and what's cool is you can put your code in here, click test, and if it passes the tests, uh, you actually get points. Um, 
yeah, I got two points. You saw my my score went up by two. And the the other cool thing is you can see um, how other people have solved the problem too. Um, so 334 people have solved it with the template literal. Um, 70 people have, have tried to, to get cute and make it into an arrow function. This is unnecessary. <laughs> um, this is listed under best practices. I mean, it's probably an old best practice, but they, they concatenated strings. Um, these people used, <laughs> what are these, hex code values? Escape values that actually escape to the character that's needed. That's unnecessary. It works, but that's unnecessary. <laughs> are these ASCII? Co these are ASCII codes. Okay. Um. And oh, that, hey, they invented their own little template function. So, in they created a string, put this put this value there, and then there's actually a function built into strings called replace, and they say replace this with the actual name. That's interesting. I, I like that. That's a that's a fun way to solve it, non-conventional way. I mean, potentially not as performant. <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna use templates, you probably should just use a template string. Okay. Um, let's see this. So, a uh, reverse word says uh, complete the solution so that it reverses all of the words within the string passed in. So, we get excuse me. We get a sentence. The greatest victory is that which requires no battle. And we need to return battle no requires, which that is victory greatest the. Eh, seems fine. <laughs> let's let's look at a few others, um, and then I'll let you all vote on which one we actually solve. Beginner series number one school <laughs> paperwork. Your classmates ask you to copy some paperwork for them. You know that there are in classmates and the paperwork has M pages. Your task is to calculate how many blank pages do you need if N is less than zero or M is less than zero. Return zero. What? Oh, oh I see. It's multiplication. <laughs> what? So you have a certain number of people that each need a certain number of pages. Or do you? Yeah, you do. Wait, no? Yeah, you do. yeah, yeah. And so uh, if there are five people and they each need five homework pages, then you have 25 pages total. Uh, there's only just some trickiness here because they're saying if there are negative five people, which is not possible, these people are like in the fifth dimension or something like that, we just assume that it's zero and then the result is zero. So it becomes zero times five. That's, that's too easy. I don't like it. Um, okay, L1 set alarm. Write a function named setAlarm, which receives two parameters. The first parameter, employed, is true. Whenever you are employed and the second parameter, vacation, is true, you are on vacation. The function should return true if you are employed and not on vacation, because these are the circumstances under which you need to set an alarm. It should return false otherwise. Um, so if you're employed and you're on vacation, the alarm should not get set because you don't want an alarm when you're on vacation. If you're not employed and you are on vacation, uh, the alarm should not get set. <laughs> and if you are not employed, you're not on vacation, the alarm should not get set. But if you are employed and you're not on vacation, um, you should uh, set the alarm. I like this because this is actually a Boolean table. We could have a lot of fun with this. This is a truth table. So uh, this is an exclusive or? No, no, no. Is it? So it's 110, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. If it were an exclusive or, then this would have been true. Is it an and? No, it's a not. Employee and not vacation. So it's not exactly, I, I was thinking it might have been like an exclusive or table or like an or table or an and table, but it's not. It's a not and. Lizardon says it's a not and. So true and true, false. False and true, false. Wait, that would be 
That this should be true if this was not and. It's just A not A and not B. And uh, Xbati, thank you. Uh, oh no, Smiley with the gift to Xbati. Thank you very much. It's and not. <laughs> and not. Is it called implication? I've, ne I've never heard of that. Um, all right, let's look at one more. Multipl multiplying two numbers? Let's look at this. Implement a function which multiplies two numbers. Let's just do this really quick. Because if you're new, here's how you do it. So we have a function. We have multiply. Uh, that takes in two values, a and b. And then we need to return a times b. So the, the multiplication operator is actually built into JavaScript. Look at us. Look at us. OK. Um, let's look at some seven cues. These might be a little bit more interesting. Um, have I not done fizzbuzz? What? What? <laughs> Joshua says I get wilder each stream. Um, return an array containing the numbers from one to n. I don't want to. I don't want to fizz buzz. No. Uh, sum of the angles. Find the total sum of internal angles in degrees in an n-sided simple polygon. N will be greater than two. No. Uh, the greatest common divisor. Find the greatest common divisor of two. I don't want to do math. I don't want to do math. Uh, write a function named repeater that takes two arguments, <laughs> um, a string and a number, and returns a new string where the input string is repeated that many times. All right, we're going to vote between these three. So uh, actually, we're not going to vote on set alarm because that's that's too easy. You get two. You're going to vote. We're going to vote between these two. Which one? Um, string repeater. So you're given a string and a number, and you have to repeat that string that number of times. Um, and then also reversed words. So you're given a sentence, and you basically need to reverse that sentence. Now, we're not reversing the words within the sentence. You see that these words are still readable. We're just reversing the order of the sentence. Um, Reversed worded's. You have one minute to vote. Vote now. Vote now. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to vote in the chat, I think you can do forward slash vote and then either uh, one or two. Split, join, reverse. Yeah, <clears throat> that's definitely one way to solve it. But I'll show, um, I mean, I could do both. But here's the thing. What you will see is that we solve it in many different ways, and we're going to end up spending 30 minutes on just one of these problems. Now, as simple as it as it may seem, there are a lot of different ways to do it, and that's what I like to show, uh, which is why we're only going to do one of them. What's up, Andreas? I feel like it's been a while. Yeah, small story. I started watching your channel before I got my first junior dev role. I just accepted an offer uh, on a different company where I'm starting as a high-ish mid position. That's awesome, Andreas. <laughs> that, those were happy stomps. Happy stomps. That's really good to hear. Can we get some love in the chat for Andreas? Um, he's, he's been here since the YouTube days. Since the YouTube days. Yeah, congrats. Hearts all around. Really love to see it. Love to see it. <laughs> all right, people want to see reverse words, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll implement that one. Um, all right, let's go. You got a student dev job as an app engineer because of me? There are too many employed people because of me. I need to stop what I'm doing. No, I'm just kidding. White boy, that's awesome. That's really good to hear. Yeah, I, I get a, I get a lot of YouTube comments. Actually, that might be one thing I add to the working on list is just spend like 10, 15 minutes responding to YouTube comments because I never do that. Um, but a lot of people uh, comment on my YouTube videos and, and say similar things. So, okay. Here we go. Uh, reverse word words Klein that's too many too many bits Klein. Klein thank you very much for the bits 1050 bits from Klein um, yeah no one should work Pokemon cards should be free 
and uh, Chipotle should be free too. That's the world that I want to live in. <laughs> um, all right. We need a function. Yeah, I I know, David, David, you, I mean, I maybe helped you a little bit, but <laughs> I know you, you, you do a lot in the, in the dev world. Uh, one computer guy, thank you for that uh, uh, upgraded sub. You were prime and now you're, now you're a, a real one. <laughs> prime is real too. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting. This, that doesn't show up on the activity feed, but it does show up in my overlay. That's cool. Okay. We need our tests. That's uh. <laughs> that's <it's> true. <laughs> Wait, don't don't give client any ideas because they give lots of bits, and I feel bad. <laughs> they sh they should not be giving me that much money. I appreciate you, Klein. No, your subs are real. Your subs are real. Smiley with the 1,500 bits. Come on, Smiley. Thank you very much for the bits. It's a lot of bits. All right. Um, I think... I think I'm actually just going to do this because I know how what it should output. Yeah. Um, can I get a, just an informal poll in the chat? How many of you, how many of you code this way? <laughs> so I see this in a lot of, um, uh, people that write a lot of maybe C, like lower level languages. Um, and, uh, Jim Maher, 369, thank you for that prime sub. Yeah. So basically what, what people do, some people. Not me. And it's okay. This is just a code style. I just I just don't like it, but it, it is a code style. Is they try to line up um, their 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 braces, right? So you can see that uh, if I were to write this code, I I would actually I wouldn't have any extra spaces here. The, I mean the, the code's gonna work exactly the same. Code's gonna work exactly the same. It's just a matter of um, like style preference of how you're reading it. Uh, and, and how you how you can look at it, but and it, it it does help some people that are trying to like line up curly braces and stuff like that. Um, but I I don't prefer this. I don't know. And thank you, Zer uh, Zerna. If you do exclamation mark theme, you can get a link to the one I'm using. There's a poll in the chat. What? Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah, and and um, I see people do this as well. So like with their requires, they use something like this. Um, and then they line up the equal signs <laughs> like this. And uh, what else would we have, have in an app like this? Yeah, that's also something that I don't do. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just a code style. It's like if if I would have gotten into that in my early days of coding, maybe I'd still code that way. But I but I don't. Okay. Um, yeah, tables of constant constants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All righty, everybody. <laughs> um, actually, let's see if we can get some keyboard foo in here. We want. No, I don't want that. I want. I basically want a new line here, and then I want a new line here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's start this up. Um, with quaka exclamation mark quaka in the chat for a link to it but this is a pretty if, if you didn't see that earlier it's actually running my code inside of my editor so right now we get the string and what we need to do hey quack nice uh, what we need to do is we oh i missed this up thank you i yeah okay i was talking mr ben the sub is <laughs> it is no I, I was just saying like here's the thing a a twitch subscription is a commitment because you're you're basically committing to give me that much money every month, which is incredibly generous. Um, and to stop it, you have to go into your dashboard and like cancel it. It's a process. With Prime, you do have to click that button every month. And I, I appreciate every single one of you that clicks that button again every month. But if you don't click it again next month, you don't resub. So a, a subscription is a commitment. I don't know. <laughs> all, all subs are all subs are equal. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I think that's another point. Like you have to manually do it, so maybe you care more. I don't know. 
<laughs> so, uh, okay, we get a string. We need to reverse it. So if we if we looked at the um, example uh, here, um, we basically need to reverse the entire sentence, but we don't reverse the individual words, right? So let's work on that. Um, what I'm going to do first is just write out some some pseudo code as, and uh, this is kind of just human readable words that describes how I'm going to solve the problem. Um, and then we'll actually implement that with code. So the first thing we need is a place to store the reversed word, right? So we get this string input, but we need some other temporary place to hold on to the, the string or the, the word as we build it up in reverse, right? So we're, we're going to have a place to store it uh, initialized to empty. So it starts off empty, and then we're going to slowly, slowly build it up. Um, there, there are a lot of a lot of ways to solve. We could actually look at this character by character, and then every time we encounter a space, we uh, prepend that word to the reverse string, right? Prepend, yeah, prepend. Put it at the beginning. Um, that's one way to do it. Yeah, a, a lot of people are, are recommending all of the like the ways of doing it with built-in. Push it into a stack. Would that work? So, yeah, push, 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 pop, 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 pop. Yeah, let's use a stack. <laughs> um, but what I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to solve it without built-in methods, array methods, or string methods. Let's solve it by looking at it one character at a time. One character at a time. Um, and then afterwards, we'll use a stack. We'll use... Uh, <laughs> use split reverse join all that good stuff um pop, 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 pop. i was not trying to make a beat um all right so here's what we're gonna do we are going to um iterate over the input string and what iterate means is to look at every single letter in the input string so we're gonna look at every single letter um we need uh, a place to store the current word. So here's here's how we're going to solve it. And and I would argue that this is the uh, like the kind of the lowest level way you could solve this thing without using any other data structures or, or without using built in methods. What we're going to do is we're going to look at this thing one letter at a time. We're going to see the T, then we're going to see the H, then we're going to see the E. And, and as we're looking at each one, we're going to build up to the current word. And the moment we encounter a space, we now know that we have uh, a token. We have a word, right? And so I'm going to take that word and put it at the beginning of the result. So it's going to start off with just the. And then I repeat the process. So like one letter at a time, this is now our current word. We come across a space. I take greatest and I prepend it to the output. So now we have greatest the, and then I, and then I repeat. So that's how we're going to solve it. Because I would argue that any programmer, if you want to call yourself a programmer, you should be able to solve it this way, not just using built-in built -in methods. Okay, iterate over the input string. Um, if the current letter is a space, append the current word and froop thank you for that gifted sub very much appreciated uh, append the current word to the um, reversed word or oh, prepend prepend the current word to the reversed word reset the current string or the current word to empty and repeat if the current letter was not a space um, we then want to append the current letter to the current word Right, so we're looking one at a time. Is this a space? No, it's not. Append it to the current word. Is this a space? No, it's not. Append it to the current word. Is this a space? No, it's not. Append it to the current word. Is this a space? Yes, it is. So now our current word is the word the. We take the, we put it at the beginning of the reverse word, and then we repeat the process. Okay. Um, and this is it. Like We just do this over and over and over again, and after we've reached the end of the string, we are done, and we can just uh, return the reversed word all right let's do it who's with me um so this sentence right here a place to store the reverse word initialized empty so we're going to start off with an empty string that we're going to build up gradually um, and then we also have the current word that we're working on um, in 
in programming, this is often called like the token. Like you're, we're basically tokenizing this thing. We're pulling out the tokens, which are the words. I'm gonna call it current word. Um, and then we iterate over the input string. So this is just gonna be a for loop that goes from i, while i is less than the uh, string length. And we increment i by one on every iteration. And that gives us the current letter. And that's gonna be string bracket i. So um, in JavaScript, you can actually use bracket notation on a string, which gives you access to a specific character in that string. Um, in this case, zero would be the first character. So the first time this code runs, uh, we're gonna get the letter t, and we're gonna put that in a variable called current letter. Now we need this logic here. Yeah, we're basically tokenizing this thing um, while also building up the output. Um, I am from many places. I currently live in uh, Denver, Colorado, USA. Okay, uh, if the current letter is a space. So to check that, we say current letter is equal to a string with a space in it. If it is, then that means uh, we have we ended the first the current the, the current word that we're looking at, and we're going to move on to the next one. Um, but if it's not a space, then that means we need to append it to the current word. So I'll say current word um, plus equals that specific letter. So that's going to build up that word. Uh, and if we log this current word um, here, we should see every word from all of the runs that happened below. Uh, hello, Yoda. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, but we need to reset it, right? So whenever we um, whenever we come across a space. Um, that means that the current we've we've ended the current word, so we're going to reset the current word back to an empty string. You will ignore the last word because the string doesn't have a space at it in, at the end. That's a good point. Um, the one thing we need to do here is uh, append the last current word after the for loop. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. And now we should see every word in in our in our examples below. Um, great. And what we need to do is we need to prepin the current word onto the reverse word. So um, we will say uh, reversed, I call it reverse word, is going to be um, the current word plus the reversed word. Now this prepins it. So this puts this at the beginning of the reverse word. And, and technically, we need to append it uh, with a space like this. Um, because, wait, or is it the other way? No, it's the other way. A space, and then the current word. Yeah, this is fine. This is what we'll do. Um, and then, so that, that should do it. That'll build it up. And then when we're out of the loop, uh, because there's no space at the end of the word, um, we technically need to take the current word that we built up so far. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to spam here, red smoke. But thanks for being here. Um, and then we append the current word to the reverse word without the space because it's at the beginning now. And then we return the reverse word. All right. First try. Why is this complaining? Why is this complaining? Reverse word. Oh, reversed. Reversed word. Yeah, yeah, I did it wrong. Okay, <laughs> we're actually going to do a prediction though. Will this work? Um, I'm not going to let you see the output. Uh, actually, I'm going to stop Quaka. And you must decide <laughs> with your channel points: Will this code work? Will it work on the first try? So we're going to get this. We should get back world exclamation mark space hello. We're going to get this. We should get back this space like space speak, spake doesn't speak Yoda. That's what we should get back. Are you ready? I mean, it's going to, oh, yeah, hey, look, look, look at that. Thank you. <laughs> so will it work? Will it give us the expected output? Or will we get an error of some kind? And that could be any error, any error, any error at all. And um, that's quite a, quite a bit of voting, but uh, I'll let you look at the code. <laughs> and uh, Serotonin Drip says they're learning. Thanks. So you're very welcome. 
Not checking for empty string? Oh, it should be fine. Should be fine. Um, and technically, our function would still work if it, even if it was an empty string, because it wouldn't iterate. And then reverse word would be empty, current word would be empty, and we would just return an empty, an empty string. The space is wrong. Mm. Line seven, length is undefined. I mean, th these are beginner problems, so they don't really pass random inputs to you. <laughs> these, these are the inputs that we're testing with. Um, I actually used Atom for a very long time. Oh, this is so cool. I totally didn't realize, but uh, Twitch puts the puts your prediction as a badge. Look at that. Baraku says, I have no idea. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I think there are a lot of people that have no idea too. Um, this would add an extra space for the first word. If it was a one word sentence, technically, yes. Um, this does not add a space for the last word. Yeah, so it's gonna break here because there's gonna be a space at the beginning. Am I allowed to change the code? <laughs> Am I allowed to do this? Can I can I add that? No, <laughs> because you people predicted to. <laughs> is is that where you thought it would error? It's fine. It's fine. I think I mean the major the, the majority of people think it's it's gonna work. Yeah, seventy eight percent of people think it's gonna work. That's okay. Here we go. I'm not I'm not changing the code. The code is staying exactly the same. Here we go. Uh, we need to run reverse words. Well, I think it actually worked. I don't see an extra space there. <laughs> so we have world hello. This like speak doesn't Yoda. Fubar. Editor kata. Boat your row, row, row. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it worked. It worked because we never came across a space for a single word, right? We never came across a space. So only this line of code ran. This code here didn't run. Yeah, first try. First try. <laughs> Thank you, Spineless Linus. <laughs> first try. Cool. All right. Well, that was fun. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you all the give you the points. That's a lot of 72,000 points in the pool. Um, how do I give you the result? Choose an outcome. Yes, it will work. Congrats to everyone that believed. Uh, you got you got double the points. <laughs> I don't trust code that runs on the first try. Well, we specifically have a first try emote here because it happens a lot. We also have a test fail emote. Uh, because stuff breaks too. Ak not now. Hola, senor Sejota. Otro mes más. I missed the message. <laughs> What's up? Thank you for being here. Thank you for that. That uh, resub. Uh, disfrutando su contenido. I don't know what this means. Sejota is CJ. That's how you say CJ in Spanish. <laughs> I'm enjoying your content. Nice, nice. Okay. Another month enjoying its content. Nice, nice. Thank you very much, Aknot Now. Um, all right, so we solved it. We solved it the hard way. <laughs> we solved it the very manual hard way. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite this without the comments, just so you can you can get a better gist of uh, not not a better gist, but you can see at a glance uh, how this code is working without all the the extra bits. But now. Now we're going to start using built-in methods. Uh, we probably could do it recursively as well. Yeah, obviously make it recursive. I think we'll start off using built-in methods because that's how most JavaScript developers would solve it, is um, use some built-in functions. Um, but look at that. That's a pretty, it's a pretty nice solution. <laughs> like set timeout. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, I'll, I'll walk you through what, what people have suggested. So. Uh, strings have this built-in method called split, and that allows us to take a string, split it on some delimiter. In this case, I'm saying the delimiter is a space. So split the string on spaces, and that's going to give us back an array. Um, parts. Uh, we'll start quack up so you can see it. So. 
Like for the example of hello world, this is going to give us an array with two values, hello and world, because it splits it on spaces, right? So that's what the split does. The next step is to reverse it. Um, and uh, arrays in JavaScript have a built-in uh, reverse function. So this actually does an in-place reverse, meaning it modifies the array. Um, and now if we look at the output, we get an array with world hello, or an array with this like speak doesn't Yoda, or editor kata. Um, and then lastly, we need to take an array and turn it back into a string. Um, and so we just return um, that array joined back together on a string. So this is using built-in methods. The code is smaller, but, but let's look at this. Look at this. There are actually multiple levels of iteration here. We have to traverse the entire string to split it on spaces. We have to find all the spaces, turn it into an array. Now we're using more memory because we're storing it in an array. Um, we then have to reverse it. That requires us traversing the entire, uh, all of at least all of the words. So that's like order M because it's not the length, it's the number of words. And then we have to iterate it again to join it back together on a space. So while this solution, everyone likes to spam it because <laughs> they, they like uh, one, like, oh, it's easy. You can just do it built in. I don't know, buddy. You're, you're ignoring the implications, but it still it, it works. And this is how people can write it as well. You don't have to put it in, in separate variables. You can just say split, reverse, join. Um, and Froop, thank you for the prime resub. I got a senior DevOps manager role 47 minutes after watching your Docker video. <laughs> nice, nice, it works. Um, <laughs> just watch the coding garden and you too can get a job in uh, 30 minutes or less. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is great. Uh, we could do it recursively too. What, um, what, were, what were some other suggestions earlier? I, I missed them in the chat. Yeah, so reverse only iterates half the array. Um, well, not, not half, whatever the result is after tokenizing it. So this is in order in plus m. Order in plus 2m. I would say this is big O of n plus 2m, which just uh, simplifies to n plus m. <laughs> All right. Um, we can do it recursively. And I think I, I, I usually I can't think o of the, um, which still equates to big O of n. Not quite, though, because... Um, it's still dependent on the number of spaces in the input string. So the more spaces, potentially, the higher the com complexity. So I would say still n plus m. It's two, it's two variables. It's not just n. Oh, yeah, let's use a stack. Let's use a stack. I like, I like the idea of using a stack. So um, then, we'll, then we'll do it recursively. And I think I can figure out the recursive solution. So um, did I publish my stack video on YouTube? Uh, if I haven't, I'm going to right now. What time is it? Is it lunchtime? <laughs> I was just thinking, I could take a break, take a small break, and play that stack video for you. So you can learn about stacks, but I'm not gonna. I'm, we're just gonna. We're just gonna solve the problem. <laughs> we're just gonna solve the problem. But if you give me a second, I'm actually gonna go premiere another video on YouTube, because um, I have a an un, unpublished video on where we implemented a stack. Um, intro to stack data structure. Who is the guy in the video on the right? That's me. That's me. <laughs> How do I usually learn a new framework? I go straight to the docs. Um, surprisingly, I, I make tutorial videos, but I don't really watch them that much. Um, and that's just because I've been doing this a very long time, and it, it's much more efficient for me to just try a thing and figure out things from, uh, from the docs. Do we have an algorithm of the day playlist? I don't know if we do. Doesn't matter. We'll create a new one.
You can run FF Mapeg with WebAssembly in a Chrome extension. What? That's crazy. Um, technology. Okay. Um, I am now premiering a video on my YouTube channel that talks about what a stack data structure is. If that interests you, you can go watch it. You also can just watch it later, um, but it is technically happening on, on YouTube right now. Um, okay. We're gonna use a stack. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go watch it. You can stay here. Um, but the idea of a stack is um, it is uh, first in, last out. So the, the things stack on top of each other. So when something gets pushed into the stack, it's here. The next thing that gets pushed is on top of that. The next thing that gets pushed is on top of that. The next thing that gets pushed is on top of that. Philo, first in, last out. Uh, a stack also has a feature of, uh, w w uh, or a me method called pop, which removes the most recently added item. So if we push, 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 pop is going to remove the most recently added item. Now look look how that will work with trying to reverse this thing. So if we push hello into the stack, it's on the bottom. If we push world into the stack, it's on the top. Now we have it so that all we have to do is pop everything off the stack and it'll be in reverse. So if we pop it, we get world. And if we pop it, we get hello. So we get world hello. So that's how we're going to use a stack to solve this problem. So let us create a stack uh, of words. Wait, wait. <laughs> no, we're going to use an array. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> uh, drop, pop it, lock it. Um, so our stack starts off empty. We now need to um, iterate over the input string and, and push each word into the stack. Now, um, again, multiple ways of doing this, like we could iterate character character like, like we did before. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do a, a split um, because that's easy enough. That's just gonna turn it into an array of words. And then I need to iterate over each one of those words and uh, push it into the stack. So I'll say stack dot. Yeah, I guess if so, if I uh, if we're using an array, technically a, an array in JavaScript doesn't work exactly like a stack. But if we push into the array, that's going to put it onto the end, and then pop pulls it off of the end, right? We'll just use we'll literally be able to use push and pop. So I'll say stack dot push word. If we log the stack now, we should have. Um, I mean, technically, technically, <laughs> it is. Um, it's already an array. Wait. It's already an array. So now we just need to, we need to iterate it and pop it because it's already an array. Huh. <laughs> we just need to pop it. So, um, yeah, no, no, check it, check it, check it. So let's say, so now that I've I've done that, I'll have my. Uh, I mean, technically, we we could reduce it, but we'll do it without a reduce first. Check it. <laughs> so we have a reversed reverse word. Starts off as an empty string. We then need to say, let's say while the words has a length, meaning while there's still stuff in our stack, keep on keeping on. And we are going to append uh, words dot pop, which will remove, uh, do I need shift or do I need, yeah, no, no, I need pop, because that's gonna remove the last item. And uh, does pop return the element or does it return an array of length one? Well, pop. removes the last element and returns it. Yeah, yeah, it returns the element. So that should that should do it. So pop, so turn it into an array or a stack, and then pop off uh, each of the words appending to the reverse word. Uh, I mean, technically we need to append with a space. I mean, and, and technically if we wanted to make it easy on ourselves, we could just push it into here. Um, 
Let's call this reversed. We're basically just implementing our own reverse method is really all we're doing. <laughs> yeah, so the spaces die if we do it that way. We don't want the spaces to die, so we just push it back into um, an array, and then we should be able to return um, reversed dot join, join it back together. Yeah, this does it. But basically what we did here is we implemented our own little reverse using uh, pop, 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 pop. Yeah. Krusky, you're a little late. We already got that. It's right here. <laughs> How long have we been working on this problem? Like 45 minutes. Uh, we're trying to do it multiple ways. Uh, the next one, the next one is recursive. Um, let's see. I can do this. I think what we need, I think what we need is our recursive function also gets passed in uh, the reverse word, which starts off as uh, an empty string. And, uh, or an empty array. We kind of could do it recursively like this. I don't know, it's hard to me, for me to think of the recursive solution, but um, what I think we want is to return, um, String dot slice on spaces. So split it on spaces and pop it. Because that will give us the first word. And then we want to append that to um, the rest of it again. So <laughs> we could say the. Um, Not, wait, not slice. Split. Split, split. Okay, here's, here, here's, here's what I'm thinking. So we have a variable that is uh, the words, and that is the array. Uh, we say words.pop, and then we call reverse words with words.slice1. So we're, we're, oh no, we're slice at the, the, the end. Remove the last one. Um... Negative. Something like that. Um, and join that back together on spaces. Will this do it? Do I have an infinite loop? Uh, but then we, we really just need to say if words.length. Um, yeah, maximum call stack size exceeded. <laughs> we, we, we blew the call stack. But uh, if words.length. Uh, if there are no words, then just return the empty string. We need we needed a, like a base condition. Uh, doesn't pop? Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, that's easy. That's really easy then. Yeah, done. <laughs> yeah, so this this removes it, and then we put it back together and call it again. There we go. This is this is the way. <laughs> this is the one. Um, oh, but we need we need to put a we need to put a space in here like that. Yeah. Seems like the worst possible solution. I mean, it's not the worst. It's just uh, uh, recursive. There's probably a better recursive way of doing it. Like we could have a recursive function that also takes in the reversed word that we're building up. But ba basically, what this does is uh, it takes the current string that got passed in splits it on a space, so now we have an array. We pop off the last one, so we pull off the last word, and now that is going to be the first word in our result. Put, add a space, and then, actually, this is gonna put a space on the end, isn't it? Because if this gets, I mean, technically, we could, we could just do this whole thing trimmed. Yeah, I mean, we, we technically could do a substring, but we need to, um, we'd have to figure out where the space is and then find that substring, which could be a little bit harder. I don't know. But uh, basically what this does is it takes the last word, 
adds it to call the function again without that word. So basically it calls itself over and over again until the street, there, there's nothing left to pop off. And, and this is a recursive function. It's a function that calls itself. Uh, and we, we have basically like, we have a base case. So when it reaches this, it's going to stop calling itself. Uh, because if we didn't have this, it would call itself forever. And that's where we get a, a stack overflow. Maximum call stack size exceeded. It just called itself so much that um, we blew the call stack. But if we have our base case, that prevents it from being an infinite call to itself. You missed the green one. What's up, Sovac? <laughs> uh, last index of, I, this could work. Get the last index of a space, split it there. Yeah, that's a way to do it. But I think I'm done with this problem. Did, were there any other ways I said I would solve it? Were there? Big O of id squared squared? What wallpaper am I using? Um, I actually don't know. I could check really quick. Uh, this is recursion. Recursion? Let's go here. Look at that. <laughs> Problem solved. Stream over. Uh, it is picture number 37 in my space pictures directory. <laughs> um, let me find it really quick. Oh no, it's only it's noon in Denver. It's it's time for lunch. Um Noon on Friday. I really thought I had a folder full of space pictures. <laughs> it is 12 p.m., yeah. Oh, no, I didn't remember the, the order of the picture. I looked at the settings, which told me the number of the picture. Oh, here it is. Right here. Look at the, oh no. Oh no, give me a sec. <laughs> uh, Brixis, Brixius, thank you for that tier one sub. I don't know why. Well, maybe I do know why. I mean, stream alerts. I thought they were on this screen. I don't know. But thank you. I appreciate you. Time is an illusion. What's not working, uh, Abduya? I'll have to look at your messages. Um, Trying to use that Twitch Prime thing. Oh, yeah, I know that it's only available in some countries, um, and you do have to have an Amazon Prime. Yeah, yeah, so Twitch Prime isn't available in India, which is unfortunate. Uh, all right, where are we at? We are here. This is this is a photo I'm using as my background. Is this the Milky Way galaxy? I actually have no idea what this picture is. It's space. It's a picture of space. Uh, it's probably legitimately... Uh, I don't think it's a computer. Maybe it, it's probably it's a computer render. It is beautiful though. Yeah, I got lots of space pics. Look at that one, and that one, and that one. Um, but <laughs> I'll uh, I'll upload this to Imager so you can use it. And Aknot now, thank you for that uh, that gifted sub. Imager. I mean, I originally got it from Imager. There's a there was an entire uh, Imager album of like hundreds of space photos. So you too, you too can um, look at that. Oh, and then this is the one that's on my, uh, uh, this screen. I shouldn't, I should not have clicked a, clicked the link in chat. I know that this one's legitimate though. <laughs> um, try to find the last space in that image. The spaces are everywhere. Um, but yeah, uh, the, this photo you see behind me is from this page that was linked. <laughs> okay. All right. We're doing pretty good. We did the algorithm of the day, which was to implement a queue. We did a couple of code katas. Um, I'm going to take probably like a 10 minute break and then we'll get into some clash of code. Um, right? Am I missing anything? What am I missing? 
I'm the first person that can pronounce your name. That's good to hear. How to benchmark the code? Uh, I don't really run benchmarks, but there are t there are tools out there. Um, there's a way to log the time when the function started and when it completed, so you can see how long it takes. Um, you could also see compare how long it takes based on the input size. Um, that kind of thing. I do need to plug this into Code Wars. If I had to pick a solution, honestly, I would just go with this one, mainly because this is a simple problem deserves a simple solution that doesn't necessarily need to worry about uh, performance. Where? There it is. <laughs> Give me a second. It's like I couldn't, I couldn't find the, um, the code kata. It reads well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you know what those functions do, um, you'll know what <laughs> if you know what split, reverse, and join do individually, you could deduce deduce what this does using those three things. So we'll plug it in here, and it works. Cool. Okay, reverse words. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So this is the set timeout one that, that uh, Doc was talking about. <laughs> so if we set the timeout based on the index and map it, that would spit them out in reverse order. Okay, Doc. Doc says, um, <laughs> you get in the string input. We're gonna create a new promise. Does this have to be a promise? Oh, do you have to await it? I guess you await it. Um, and this is our resolve function for when we want to resolve the function, resolve the promise. Oh, you oh you resolve when you're done building it up. I see. That makes sense. Um, so we have y, which is an empty array. We have the the input string split into spaces, and then for every word, um, we're going to push it into our, this is going to be our reverse story. We're going to push it in um, after waiting a certain amount of time. Yeah, and so this isn't sorting it. This is reversing it using set timeout, basically. That's what this is. This is a sleep reverse. Yeah, I've, I've watched Traverse C Media. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's a great, great YouTube channel. Yeah, it's beautiful. So basically, <laughs> it, it waits before it appends the next one, and it rates it waits the right amount of time so that it happens in the right order. Yeah, yeah. So the set timeout basically just waits longer if it's at the beginning. So if the index is zero, the timeout is going to be the longest, meaning the the last thing to be appended. Um, wait, did I do did I do this right? Oh, I, f I used a formatter. I was like, why did I all of a sudden get um, double quotes everywhere? It's because I used a formatter. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so it basically waits longer for the things that need to appear at the end, which is, is a beautiful thing. Thank you, Doc, for that. Uh, play with <laughs> fetties. <laughs> Thank you for that. Prime sub. Double quotes. Uh, let's see how other people solved it. So that's the classic solution. Split join reverse. Or split reverse join. Split reverse join. Um, split reverse join. Split reverse join. Um, split. Uh, reverse. <laughs> and then jo they implemented their own reverse. Um, and this is the how we solved it earlier by looking at each individual letter. Cool. All right. Thank you for the follows, everybody. Appreciate you. Um, what am I doing? I think I'm going to take a break because I've been streaming for about two hours. But I will be back and we will play some Clash of Code. Actually, yeah, I'm going to take a quick break. And so um, uh, you'll have a chance to sign up on Clash of Code. And uh, Almister, we'll, we'll see you later. Thanks for hanging out with us. Create a function for each word, call them in order, then throw an error. The reverse words is the error.stack. <laughs> That's hilarious, Doc. Okay. Um, 
a clash of code. So this is, oh, I'll need to sign in, but uh, it's fine. We'll get there. Um, this is a website where we can uh, a, all attempt to solve the same coding problem with the same constraints. It's, it's competitive programming. So um, in a second, I will start a private clash. Let me go ahead and log in um, just so I can show you the different types. Yeah, here we go. Because uh, we could attempt to do something the fastest. So basically, we all get into a room together. And then uh, when the thing starts, we all have up to 15 minutes to solve the coding problem that we're presented with. The first person to solve it is the winner if we do fastest mode. If we do shortest mode, um, you can take all 15 minutes, but the person that has the least number of characters in their, in their solution um, is the winner. And, and that is uh, like code golf. And then the last kind is reverse mode. So in reverse mode, you are not given a problem statement. Uh, you are given uh, the inputs and the outputs, and you have to figure out what code to write based on that. So uh, I'm going to give you a link to this website. Um, you should uh, sign up if you want to play. We're going to probably do two to three rounds of it. It'll be pretty fun. Um, and uh, do we have a clash command? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else that comes along, do exclamation mark clash in the chat. And I'll be back in at most 10 minutes. I'll probably be back sooner than that. Oh, and you can you can choose whatever programming language you want. So when we do fastest mode, I'll, I'll let you choose whatever you want. If we do shortest mode, I'm going to restrict us so that way we all have the same constraints. We'll probably do one shortest mode with JavaScript so I can just... I could dunk on everybody and, and show, show you my code golf skills. And then we could use uh, probably like Ruby or Python. Um, and we'll do, we'll do, yeah, we'll do one fastest, one shortest, and at least one reverse. When I get back, when I get back in roughly 10 minutes, um, while I'm away, I guess I'll play a, a video for you, right? Um, I have videos, I have playlists. Let's go to the content playlist. Um, we need roughly a 10 minute, 10, 15 minute video. Hmm. Oh, I guess technically the, the, the stack video is happening right now. <laughs> um, We'll do that. We'll go to this one. Uh, build a simple web page with Twitch chat and TMIJS. Hello, friends. Welcome to um, get that 1080p. Uh, we're going to um, don't I have a yeah? We can do picture and picture. We can do this. A little bit of that. Oh, I thought the, this is always behind. I thought the, the chat would always be on top. It's okay. Um, you know what I need? I need a message to show you, <laughs> to show anybody that, that comes along. So we're gonna just build that really quick and then I'm gonna leave. Um, It, it, uh, it will be a private clash, uh, meaning uh, whenever I start it, I'm going to share the link, and you have to click on that link to join the clash. Yeah, that's what that means. Smiley face. Cool. We need some styles. Um, the body will have a font family of sans serif. We'll have a color of 
white and a background of black. Here we go. This is our message. Look at that. Pop that out. Put this over here. Put this down here. Um, this goes here. This goes here. Look at that. It's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> um, see you in 10-ish um, minutes. And Clarkio, what's up, buddy? Thank you for the resub. Shout out to Clarkio. I'm going to take a quick break, but um, watch this video while I'm gone. In this video, uh, I am implementing a quick little, a small app that listens to Twitch chat, and people can type one in the chat, and it keeps track of that. Um, you probably shouldn't type one in the chat while actually watching the video, because nothing's going to be listening for that. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll be back soon. Don't type one in chat. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. In this hopefully short video, we're gonna build a basic web page that listens, listens for messages in Twitch chat. I am currently live on Twitch. There are people watching me and they're gonna help me uh, uh, with, by, well, we'll build this thing. So to build this, I'm going to use a library called TMIJS. Um, this is the Twitch messaging interface. It's a really great, really easy to use uh, JavaScript library uh, that allows me to listen for Twitch chat um, inside of a web page or even in a Node.js application. And thank you very much, Sean, for the thousand bits. I haven't seen the notification yet, but it should pop up. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh <laughs> Is it borked? Did anybody see the notification? Oh well, we gotta keep moving. Um, so uh, right now I have nothing but a readme. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a basic web page. Uh, <laughs> yeah, rip my my notifications aren't working. That's unfortunate. But we're gonna set up a basic web page. Listen for messages in my Twitch chat right now. Uh, we're gonna listen for the command start count, and then we're gonna count any message that is the number one. And we're going to display that on the page as well as all the users um, that have s sent that message. And then when we hear the command stop count, um, we are going to just sp say out loud what the count was. Oh, you're right. I, the token was revoked, so it can't listen anymore. I totally forgot. Well, we're going to keep moving. <laughs> I'll fix it afterwards. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we need a, we need a, a web page. So I'm going to create an index.html, just a basic web page. We'll do a basic template, and we're going to call this the Twitch Chat Counter. Um, we need to bring in uh, the TMIJS library, and then we're also going to bring in our own custom JavaScript. So to get the TMIJS library, um, I typically just go to the TMIJS GitHub. So if you go to uh, GitHub.com/tmijs/tmijs uh, um, in here, you can go to the releases page and download the built version of uh, TMI that will work in a web browser. You could probably find this on a CDN as well. You just need something that will work in the browser. And so here I'm going to download tmi.min.js. Uh, I'm going to save this into that directory. So go in here, coding garden, basic Twitch page right there. Great. And uh, now that I have tmi.min.js, I will bring it in. So I'll have uh, the source here will be tmi. And then I need to bring in another JavaScript file. And this is where I'm going to write my custom code. So I'll call this uh, app.js. Uh, great. Um, so we're going to create a file, app.js. And this is where I will listen for Twitch chat. So if you check out uh, tmijs.com, uh, they have uh, an example that you can copy and paste. Uh, in this scenario, I'm not going to copy the require. Because uh, the require is if you were using it in a node environment or some environment in, in the browser that would support require, but I'm not. I'm just using the CDN. So I'm going to copy that, paste it in, 
And what I need to specify is what channel are we listening for messages in? In this case, I want to listen for messages in the Coding Garden Twitch channel. Um, and you can see I don't have to specify a password because we're not sending any messages. I'm just listening for messages. So uh, just like that, uh, we should see all of the Twitch chat messages in the console. So I'm going to use an auto-refreshing uh, static file server called Light Server. This isn't a build tool or anything like that. It's just... Um, a static file server that auto refreshes when things change. Um, so there, yeah, you can see that uh, things that happen in the Twitch chat also appear in my console. And it's actually a little bit faster than when my overlay is showing. So that's great, we're listening for messages. Um, and so what I wanna do is I want to uh, listen for that uh, start count command. Um, so we've got our setup, we're listening for messages. Now we wanna listen for start count. Um, and so we can really just say like, uh, uh, one thing you typically want to do with a bot is um, if self, just return true. Uh, in this specific scenario, we don't have to worry about that because our bot isn't sending messages, but this would just prevent you from responding to your own bot's messages. So I always just do that anyways. Um, and then we can check. So we can say if message is equal to uh, start count, do the thing. Else, do some other thing. Um, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to start the count. So I'm going to have count be a global variable starts off at zero and then I'm going to have another variable that's like uh, listening for count and that's going to be a boolean let's take a quick stretch uh, just return no reason oh yeah you're right oh thank you Alka. and Alka's here Alka's here so Alka <laughs> uh, is uh, one of the maintainers of TMIJS um, okay so listening for count is false that's great. Um, and then, yeah, we're just going to return here. Okay, so if the message is start count, then we'll say listening for count is true. Um, and then uh, otherwise, um, if we are listening for the count, then we want to increment the counter. But we only want to increment the counter if the message is equal to one. So if we're listening for count and uh, message is equal to one. So we're only going to look at messages that are literally the number one. Um, and we're also going to keep track of all the users that have sent a message. So we'll, we'll just have our users here, and this will be um, an object. And we're going to uh, put the users in there. And technically, I can just use that to keep track of the count. Yeah, let's do that. So um, if we're listening for count and the message is literally the value 1, then I'm going to say um, uh, users at uh, tags.name, username? I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> message.trim do I need to do that I'm not gonna do that uh, and actually we really should just let's do this to debug it we're gonna log the tag so tags has a bunch of information inside of it um, and yeah so Alka is telling me username is the login so that's good but let's just look at all the tags that happen for any message um, so right now it's gonna listen for any user that does start count so we go back over here uh, anybody can just do start count I guess I'll be the first start count and now it should keep track. Um, yeah, and so these are the tags. This is all the information about the message that was sent. And the thing that I care about is username. Um, yeah, username, because that will, will, will keep it unique. So um, we'll say uh, users at username equals true. And by doing this, uh, and users at tags dot username. By doing this, it will only count each user once. Um, and so that way, uh, one user doesn't get counted multiple times. Um, and then uh, we also want to listen for end count. So we'll say if, um, whoa, 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 almost there. We only got a minute left. We'll probably take a little bit, lo a little bit longer than that. But that's okay. So we'll say else if um, message is equal to end count, then uh, we're going to say listening for count is false. And uh, then we'll like uh, display um, or like say count out loud. So we need to do that. Uh, I spelled message wrong, so we'll fix that. Fix that. Uh, one thing we need to do here is display uh, current count on page. So that's fine. Juice box, welcome. Uh, my my overlay is broken right now, <laughs> but thank you very much for the raid. Uh, we are creating a very, very basic uh, Twitch page that's going to count the number of people that say uh, one in the chat. So you can help us out with this. Uh, and what's up, Anthony Writes Code? Welcome to the show. Everyone should check out Anthony Writes Code. Shout out to Juicebox. Uh, they are both a member of our Live Coders team. All right, so let's see if this works. So now, 
this is now uh, waiting for a chat. So I'm going to say uh, start count. So now it's listening. And now, um, actually, I'm not logging anything out. But every time someone types the number one, uh, it's actually increasing users behind the scene. We can take a look at users. Um, if we expand it, there's only one person in it. <laughs> um, listening for count. Oh, did somebody do end count? Somebody might have done end count already. <laughs> So what, one thing I actually want to do is I want to um, only allow me to start or end the count. So uh, what I want to find is my... Actually, I can just look at the username. So we'll say if... Uh, let's extract out the username. So we'll say uh, username equals uh, tags, like that. And we'll say uh, if username is equal to coding garden and message uh, equals start count, uh, then we'll do that and also right here. So basically I'm restricting it so that only I can uh, can Start or in the count. Yeah, and Andrew is mentioning something else we could do We could check to see if they're a mod um, You could also do broadcaster, which is uh, the this specific account. There's a lot of ways to do it I'm just gonna do it in the simplest way here So if it's me start it otherwise end it and then here we're just going to log um, The number of keys in here. So we'll do object.keys users.length. So this this count should go up and we'll see it logged in the console. So um, I am going to start count and if people type one in the chat, we can see it going up. Yeah, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. So every single mess every single unique message uh, increments the count. And then if I do uh, end count like oh end count like that. Uh, then it should no longer be listening. So now it's stopped and it's at the number 27. Great. Now all I need to do is take this information and actually put it on the web page. All right, see you later, Juicebox. Thank you very much for that raid. Thanks for bringing all your friends. Um, all right, so um, at this point, we need to display it on the page. Let's go to our HTML. Uh, we're going to create a little section here. So we'll create a, a, a div. We'll create uh, a p tag. We'll give this an ID of count. And then we'll create another p tag and we'll give this an id of users um and then we're just going to update these um and actually let's just make this an h1 we'll make this um like an h3 and i'm going to bring in some very basic css so we don't have to worry about that would a set help what do you mean a set oh a set would it would work in exactly the same way yeah yeah um i like objects i've always used objects uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right, because basically uh, we are keeping track of unique users. Sets are perfect for uniques, un uniqueness, so basically we would, we would just add the user to the set. Uh, but here I'm just adding a property to an object and setting it true. So if the same user sends the message twice, it's just going to overwrite it and it won't add a new key. Cool. Uh, so we have count and users. Let's just grab these in my uh, my JavaScript here. So I'll say users element is uh, document.query selector. Uh, with uh, the ID users, and then we need to do the same thing with the um, count element. So we have the count element and the users element, which exactly correspond to this H1 and um, that H3. Now, when a message comes in, we'll say uh, count element dot text content equals the total number here. Um, and then we'll say uh, users element dot text content equals all of the usernames um, joined together with a comma. And that should do it. So now um, I will start the count. Now type one in the chat if you want to be included in this counter. <laughs> nice. Very good. Very good. Cool, and now I'm going to stop it. So I will say uh, stop count. All right, and now the, now it should stop. It shouldn't go up anymore. So 50, we got 50. We got away all the way up to 50. Uh, wait, it's still going up. Is it? No, 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 52. It was, there were last, some last few messages. Um, did I do the right thing? End count, stop count. Oh, I did the wrong thing. Technically it should still be going up, yeah. <laughs> I did the wrong command. I should actually do um, in count like that. 
and now it shouldn't go up anymore. So yeah, if you keep typing one, it shouldn't go up. We should be stuck at 60 now. Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So I don't see, the last person I see is Funny Dude. So yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so we've done it. <laughs> it's a super, a super basic website. Um, it 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 uh, it doesn't send messages in chat or anything like that. It's literally just listening for messages in Twitch chat, and then we we have some interaction on the web page. Um, one last thing I'm gonna do, and this will be fun. This is beyond like w Twitch or anything like that. Deploy. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I, I guess actually one thing I can do, let's actually do this. I have another idea. Let's, let's implement a reset command. So if I do reset, reset count, um, that will clear the entire page. So let's implement that. Um, and really I can start to clean this up. So basically, um, if the username is coding garden, then I'm going to have the specific things that are listening for commands like this. And then I don't have to check in here. These are basically my, my command handlers. Um, and then if the user is not me, then we decide whether or not to increment the count. So that's a little bit better. But now I can also say uh, if message equals to uh, clear count, um, then we can say uh, we'll, we'll basically just wipe it out. Uh, thank you very much, Dean, for the uh, Patreon pledge. Much appreciated. So uh, count element text content will be uh, nothing, and the users will be nothing. Uh, and we'll just say this is waiting for count. And we'll start that off uh, right here. We'll say this is waiting for count. So now, waiting for count, then I can do start count, and then anybody can type one in the chat. One, 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 one. We got two. All right, I'm going to end it really soon. <laughs> So now I will do, uh, well, I forget the command. Is it end count? Uh, end count. So now if I do end count, it should stop listening. So now we're stuck at uh, 35. RS skin was the last one. Yeah, so it's not going up anymore. So that's great. And now I should be able to do clear count. Like that. And it says waiting for count. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, okay, well, the last thing is I actually want to say the count out loud. Um, and so there actually is a speech synthesis built into the browser. Um, yeah, let's close that. Speech synthesis utterance. Um, so we can do this, we can get, I don't know if I even want to get voices. And then we can do synth.speak. Okay. So this is built into the browser. I don't have to install anything, but basically what we'll do is when end count happens, we want to say the count out loud. So for that, we'll do window.speech synthesis. Um, I guess we can specify, let's see what the default voice is. And I think actually we can just do dots. This, I think this is all it takes, dot speak. And then we want to speak the count. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I should reset the object. So whenever we clear the count, thank you very much. Yeah, we should say users is now back to nothing. Um, and we'll just set make this a let so that way we can overwrite it. But yeah, thank you, pure, pure, pure lull for thinking about that. When we clear, we want to reset so there are no more users. Um, okay. Uh, let Let's see if this works. Honestly, I just want to see if I can run this code in the browser and see if it will speak. Argument one is not an object. Well, uh, utter this. Oh, we have to create a new speech synthesis utterance. Like, uh, well, uh, say, so we're just going to say, say count is equal to this, but that's going to grab the total count. Some browsers don't support it completely. Well, hopefully um, Firefox supports it. Okay, let's see. So we're gonna do that, but instead we're gonna say hello world. Hello world. Did you hear it? <laughs> um, hello world. 
great. That's beautiful. That's that's literally all I want. Um, and so it will say the count uh, whenever uh, we have ended. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. All right, <laughs> let's put it on the interwebs. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll test it. <laughs> we'll test it one more time, and then uh, and then we're ready to go. All right, is everyone ready for the final run? Uh, don't type one in the chat because I'm gonna ask you to type. So I'm gonna do uh, start count. Here we go. Look at it, look at it. Okay, so type one in the chat <laughs> and the number will go up and up and up and up and up. Very nice. Let's see how high, how high we can get it. It says there are 199 people watching, um, but I don't know how many people actually have the Twitch chat open. We'll let it keep going. <laughs> Uh, I will mention that it's um, it's unique. So if you've already typed one, it's not going to count you twice. You can only type one once. Soriously, and Mulgort, and Izzo, and Liam, and Capital. My cup is blue. Yeah, that's why. Invisible. <laughs> Alka typed eight. <laughs> All right. So are you ready? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say end count, and it should say the number out loud. Are you ready? Eighty-two. Eighty-two. <laughs> Nice. How to count to one. Um, that's awesome. So uh, last thing I'll do is just deploy it. And I think to deploy it, um, I'll use Surge. Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Um, we're here hanging out on Twitch. You should join. I accidentally stopped the video. It's fine. The video is over. Oh no, I didn't mean to close Firefox entirely. That's okay, we'll get back, we'll, we're back. We're back, yeah, I was on break. It's This is me, we're live now. <laughs> um, it's fine, Hope, hopefully that was interesting in the slightest for some of you. Um, here we go, hello, welcome back. We are here, hey Chad, what's up buddy? What was that? <laughs> that was, yes, that was a video. It's okay. It's okay for those of you that didn't know that it was a video. It's totally fine, because you still probably enjoyed it just as much. Yeah, no, I know. People were typing one in chat. It was great. <laughs> ah, that's hilarious. Yeah, but um, if you haven't, you can check out my YouTube channel. I post all, all the all the live streams. I'll, I'll clip every now and then. Uh, I post full live streams on here, too. Uh, if you search for Coding Garden Twitch chat, you'll find that video that we were just watching. And if you, like, joined in the middle, you could watch the rest of it if you want to. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, but what we're about to do right now is we're going to play Clash of Code, which is going to be really fun. So this is a competitive, competitive program. I don't know why I just did that. Um, we're going to play. We're going to play this game where we will all get dropped into a lobby. How did I get signed out? Oh, I need to add it to my uh, my cookie cookie keeper. <laughs> type type one in chat. <laughs> Wait, is uh, Jose? Jose? Or Hozu? Hey, just on Taken. Thank you for that. Prime Resub, here we go again. Um, I don't know what I was about to say, but I need to log back in to this website. <laughs> the, th the thing is, um, uh, you thought it was live, but usually the chat is so busy anyways that you couldn't see your ones in the chat. Here. As a consolation, type one in the chat now. You will see your name on the screen. I didn't mean to troll you. I was just on a break. I ate a, I ate a, a, a Cliff Bar. Oh, look, Protopol's got got pie. I ate a, a Cliff Bar, uh, a, a brownie chocolate Cliff Bar. It was really good. It's going to hold me over till lunch. Ones. Ones in chat. Okay, so... Um, We are going to play Clash of Code. I'll post the link in the chat. Um, and Shirkum, thank you for that resub, who says hello once again. Hello, hello. Um, click that link, sign up if you uh, have not. And we're going to do a private clash. So I'm going to create a lobby uh, that will create a unique link that you can click to join that lobby. Uh, we're going to start off with fastest mode. So uh, when we start, after everybody gets into the lobby, we can start. And um, the uh, uh, when when we start, the first person to solve the problem that we're presented with is deemed the winner. Now, 
you're all winners in my heart. And honestly, this is really just a competition with yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Can you solve this problem? However fast you solve it is great because that's 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 you. That's what you're capable of and you did it. And maybe next time you'll do it a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to do. Is everyone ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> so uh, click this link in the chat. Um, oh, thank you, Andrew. You had it. Re you had it ready to go. <laughs> yeah. And if anybody else comes along, you can do exclamation mark current clash and that will give you this link. Click it. And you can join the lobby. There we go. Got a few people in here. Yeah. And we can have up to a hundred people in the lobby. So let's, let's try to max it out. Oh, your bot is running. That's what did it. Nice, Andrew. That's good to hear. <laughs> uh, can you tell me my opinion on React versus you versus Svelte? I've been learning React for a few days. Um, we don't have time. We only have <laughs> a few minutes before this thing starts. But I'll direct you to the frequently asked questions. And in the frequently asked questions, uh, there's a question on why do I prefer Vue.js. Um, and there's two links here to two uh, older videos. Um, this second one is probably the one that you'll get the most out of because um, I talk about the differences between them and why you would choose one over the other. Um, and then this one is a complete introduction to Vue.js with the idea that you're already a React developer. And I talk about a lot of things in, in, in relation to, uh, to React. But um, my opinion, Vue.js is awesome. It's, it's easy to use. It's a great community. Um, I like it. React is fine. There's a lot of over-engineered solutions in the React world. Um, Svelte, fantastic. But the community isn't as big or there yet because it's a newer framework. Um, but Svelte took a lot of influence from, uh, from Vue. If you look at Svelte before the 2.0 release, the syntax was almost exactly the same as Vue.js. And now Vue is actually taking hints from Svelte. Like there's in Vue 3, there's a, a, an experimental feature where you can actually make your script tags uh, export and import variables, very similar to how you do it in Svelte. I don't know. But uh, there's 44 people in the lobby. Let's go. Let's just get it. <laughs> um, so when I click launch, you're going to have up to 15 minutes to solve the problem. First person to solve it gets their name at the top of the list. Does that mean they're winner? Technically, yes. But you're all winners in my heart, so let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Mesky. <laughs> um, here we go. Okay, so you can see the countdown timer here. Over on the right hand side, right hand side is where you're going to write your code, uh, and you can choose many different languages. I'm going to use JavaScript because it's what I'm most fluent in. Um, but yeah, uh, as this is fastest mode, meaning the first person to solve it technically gets their name at the top of the leaderboard. Your code doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work. Uh, you can also see your tests down here. So if you click this button, that'll launch a window. And you can see some example inputs and outputs. So given this input, that's your output. Given this input, that's your output, et cetera. Um, and now I will read the problem description and hopefully be able to solve this. So you are a security guard on a weird planet whose role is to remove imposters from the crowd coming in. All right, we got to remove the imposters. For unique identification, everyone in the crowd has, a has an identification number. You're instructed to allow the permit based on their identification number. The rule of this weird planet is simple. If the identification number is a power of two, then don't allow the person. Otherwise, allow the person. So you are given on line one the number of persons you're going to see. Line two is in separated ID numbers. So line two has all the ID numbers of everyone coming in. Um, and then you need to output all of the identification numbers that are not a power of two. Is that it? <laughs> is that what we're doing? I could be done already. Oh, no, you, put, you output a zero if they're not allowed and a one if they are allowed. OK, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, so um, Doc has a fun fact. X bit shifted with x minus 1. If that's equal to 0, then it's a power of 2. Well, here's what I'm going to do. So uh, we have the inputs, uh, which is just the second line um, split on spaces. And then we actually just need, for, for each one of those, 
Uh, we need to say, like, if it's a power of two, um, output zero. So that's going to give us the ID number. And we'll say, like, is power of two with that ID number, then we output uh, zero, otherwise we output one. Um, and then let's join that all back together on space. So this is what we're going to output. And then I just need to implement is power of two as a function. Um, oh, no, 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 no. So we have a function, is power of two, with the number. And then um, how do we figure out if something's a power of two? We can't, can't we, we can take the square root. If the square root is a whole number, then it's a power of two, right? I'm not going to do that, Doc. I have no idea what it's doing. It's doing some bit shifting, right? <laughs> so I just need to return um, math dot square root of number. Um, right? So the value is the square root. And uh, if return the value is equal to uh, math dot floor of that value. So if there if there is no decimal, then it's a power of two. I broke it. <laughs> do, I, do I need the, do I need the the opposite? No. Uh, square root of eight isn't a whole number. Oh, but eight is a power. Okay, never mind. Never mind. It's not power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not divisible by two either, is it? No, because something divisible by two doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily a power of two. How do I figure out if something's a power of two? <laughs> I could calculate all the powers of two up to three to the thirtieth power, and then just look it up based on that. Um, let's just search the web. How to check if a value is power of two? Use the bitwise option? I could, but I feel like it's cheating because you gave me the bitwise option. How to check if a number is a power of two? Oh, okay, that's what uh, Idiocracy just suggested. Um, divide by two, and if you get to one, then it's divisible by two? Yeah. So the most straightforward way to convert a positive number of two into the form of two to the n is to count the number of n of divisions by two that it takes to reach a quotient of one. For example, 524288 requires 19 divisions to reach 1, giving it 2 to the 19th power. Cool. Leak Geek has another uh, like log-based solution. Um, I'm, I'm just going to use this. I'm going to keep dividing by 2, and if that gives us back 1, then we know that it is a power of 2. So... Um, Say so while it's not just divisible by two, it has to you have to divide until you get to one. Uh, we'll say while number is greater than zero, number um, divided by two. If that number is equal to one, return true. Here we go. This is the solution. No. <laughs> um, it fails for, let's see what the second input is. It fails for the value one. Ah, ah. That's, that's what we need. No, it's not. Oh, for zero? Oh, cause, So we're saying that one is a power power of two. <laughs> like I, I base this is the hardest part is figuring out if it's a power of two. Very obviously, we could copy and paste a solution from the web, but I also want to solve it myself. Uh, to the zeroth 
is one, so one is technically a power of two. Um, but this is saying that one, yeah, so we should, be, we should get back zero. Why doesn't this work? So number is greater than or equal to one. Number is equal to one. Oh, they're strings. That's why. <sighs> All right, so look at that. I got 12th place, that's not bad. That is not horrible. 100% in 12th place. Okay. Um, we'll check and see how the top three solved it, and then we'll we'll do another one, and everyone will get a, get a chance to compete there as well. All right. Uh, number mod two. So no, because um, 40 is not a power of two. 36 is. And 38, and wait, four, wait, no. Isn't it? It's two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. Okay, th those are powers of two. <laughs> 32 is like, yeah, so th those, are, those are powers of two. Um, that doesn't mean it's, it, 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 like, so 40 is divisible by two, but it's not a power of two, so... Yeah, two to the second is four, two to the third is eight, two to the fourth is 16, two to the fifth is 32, two to the sixth is uh, 64. Yeah, which is why, yeah, yeah, which is why the just straight division wouldn't work. All right, let's see how Q64 did. They did it in Kotlin, which is a fun language. Uh, this is actually used to build um, Android apps, among other things, right? Right? All right, here we go. Uh, skip the first line, read the second line, and split it on spaces. So this gets each of the each of the numbers. Um, they did the due dil diligence of turning it back into numbers, which I forgot to do, which is where my triple equals broke the whole thing because I was comparing numbers to strings. But if I just if I would have converted it back to numbers, then uh, we would have been good. Um, cool. And then here's a win statement. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> It is a nice quantum. It is used for uh, for Android. And Callum, double digits. Thank you for that resub. Uh, how long? How long? Ten months. Nice. Count the number of set bits if more than one is not power of two. Is that what's happening here? So, uh, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so turn it into a binary string. Count the number of ones. So count it, and if it is a one... Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, count the number of bits. If more than one, it's not a power of two. Oh. If the number of ones is one, then it's a power of two? What an interesting uh, property of, of binary numbers. So uh, it's, it's kind of interesting how similar this is to JavaScript. Uh, I mean, things are obviously different. The syntax is a little bit different. Like when we're doing a map, uh, we're using curly braces here. Uh, you can do the same thing in JavaScript to convert a number into binary. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One, zero. One, zero, zero. Those are all... Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Those are all powers of two. So if you convert it to binary, count the number of ones. If there's only one, it's a power of two. Otherwise, it's not. Um, cool. And then uh, join it back all together. Great job, uh, Q64. Good job. Okay. Uh, Slusher did it in PHP. Let's see how they did it. Uh, read in the number of items. Uh, explode the standard input. Uh, that basically, <laughs> this is the array split method in PHP, explode. Uh, so we explode it uh, to get an array of values. And then we're going to be pushing into this result array. So we're iterating up to the number of values. Um, and then they did the, the the bit shifting that I did not want to do. And if you follow the logic a bit further, you end up with X. Uh, let's look up what the ampersand uh, bitwise operator is. Is it? Oh, it's just and. It's a bitwise and. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, so this is a bitwise and of the number and the number minus one. Uh, and if that's equal to zero, it is a uh, power of two. Huh. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so this right here is is basically determining, is this a power of two? And if it is, the result, the resulting output for that ID number is zero, otherwise the resulting output is one. Uh, we then implode it, which is the, basically their join method, and we're done. It's a great job. I always love seeing explode and implode, it's fun. Uh, let's see how Mark Mark did it. So Mark Mark did it in JavaScript. Uh, read in the inputs, we have the outputs, iterate over the numbers, um, parse it, and push it. Yeah, so this basically um, maps all of, it takes all of the inputs and turns them into numbers, because by default they're strings, because we read them in as strings. And then we map over them and do this, do the, do the business. <laughs> we do the bit shifting to determine if it is a power of two. Great, great job, everyone. Uh, all right, let's do another one. Um, tons of solutions here, but let's, let's go again. Another one. Wait, am I going to be logged out again? Cause I left. I'm not. Okay, great. Great. Here we go. For this next one, we're going to do shortest mode. Bum, bum, bum. And in shortest mode, you must solve it with the least number of characters. So it doesn't have to be performant. It doesn't have to be pretty. The person that solves it in the least number of characters wins the whole thing. And I'm going to make you do it with JavaScript. <laughs> uh, mainly because I know there's a, there's a lot of people that are really good at this, but they don't necessarily know JavaScript. And I know I know all the tricks and the tricks and ship tips in JavaScript to get it really short. Uh, so. This gives me a better chance of winning. Yeah. Um, if there's enough interest, we could do another shortest mode with like Python, maybe after this. But let's go. So here's the link. Nice. If you type exclamation mark uh, current class, you'll get a link to it. Um, join. This is, yeah, it's absolutely biased. This is my stream. <laughs> I'm the game master. We do what I want. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I should enable TypeScript for shortest mode. Nah, nah. Yeah. Th so there's all kinds of tricks. Don't give it away. Don't don't give people hints. I want to win. I want to be the wiener. All right, I, I believe Clash of Code lets people join after we've already started, right? That, that's a thing now, isn't it? Let's go ahead and launch it. We got 41 people in the lobby already. Can I include jQuery? <laughs> Wait, are, are people betting? Oh, okay. Um, we could do a prediction. It's, it's kind of already too late. So again, here's your countdown timer. Honestly, the time doesn't matter. You could wait until the last second. If your solution has the least number of characters, you win. Um, you can see your code size right here. Now to win, you want this number to be as small as possible. So comments count. You want to remove all comments. Um, you want to remove new lines. In JavaScript, semicolons are optional so you probably don't want to use semicolons i'll give you one hint one hint if you're new to javascript here uh, instead of doing console.log you actually can do print this will only work in a uh, coding game it's a special uh global that they add in there for you um but it works the same as console.log all right here we go here's the problem description given two vectors a and b Print the scalar product, also known as the dot product. The scalar product is the sum of products of the corresponding magnitudes. Well, so 3 times 7 is 21, 5 times 2 is 10, 21 plus 10 is 31. Yeah, so you multiply all these, you multiply all these, and you add them together. Easy peasy. All right, um, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, this is going to give us the... Okay, so I'm going to store read line in a variable called r. That's going to let us shorten it up. We're going to call it once, because by calling it once, um, we just skip the first line. And then uh, we're going to get a line for every line. <laughs> uh, we also need uh, the running sum. I guess, is, is it all just x, y? 
Let's look at the example. In, oh, no, we have multiple. We have uh, 2D vectors, 3D vectors, um, and really big vectors. So it actually varies uh, the number of um, vectors that we have. Yeah. Um, okay, so that makes it a little bit trickier. But uh, I'm going to store each line there. And I'm actually going to have the running sum in some uh, in an array. So the array is going to store the sums of each of the x, y, z, etc., depending on how many coordinates we have. Um, and then we get each individual line. And so with each individual line, we need to um, split it. on spaces, that's going to give us an array with all of the coordinates in it. And then for each of those, um, we need to um, need to map over it. So I think we could store it back in S. So we could say, um, so this is going to give us each individual value. And we want to say that S at this given index um, plus equals the current value. Or no, not plus equals, times equals, because we multiply it. Um, and um, we want to like initialize it to one if it's not already there. So we'll do like that or one times the current value. Like that. Um, and so that's going to give us an array of all the sums. It should anyways. And then uh, we need to add up all of the sums. So we're just going to print uh, s.reduce with um, uh, the, the total t, each individual value. T plus V. All right. Almost first try. <laughs> so I didn't do zero checking. Uh, we got 39 instead of 33. Um, and does it, but it does, it should work. Yeah, it works for big vectors. We just need to handle the case where it's zero. Can I save a space on S equals? Did I already fix that? Yeah. What's up, Squeedos? Uh, I'm still live. Yeah, we're doing Clash of Code. Exclamation mark current clash if you want to uh, click in and try solving it. Okay, 5 times 7 is 35. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 35 minus 2 is 33. Okay. But that actually, yeah, yeah. So uh, because we have a 0 there, um, it didn't get overwritten? Shouldn't our logic handle that? So the the tricky part here, I mean, honestly, to help with this, I could just do read the line and split it here. This is going to give a, use a lot more characters, though. Um, and so by doing this, we now have our initial value. And then I can get rid of this. Yeah. So 102 characters. It's pretty good. Honestly, it's pretty good. Um, Mal did it with 2,550 characters. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that that's like a Rick roll or something like that. Uh, zero is false. But it's, it's zero inside of a string. I don't know. Doesn't matter. How can we make this smaller? Um, uh, remove no, you, you can't. So in in the reduce, we have two arguments, so I can't remove the parentheses here. Um, we can do this. That removes one character, or not. Nan. <laughs> oh no no no. Um, we can do uh, 
this like that. Yeah. So basically what that does is, is like, this is a no op because I just want to read the line and forget about it. So it reads the line, forgets about it, and then passes that as an argument here. That read line doesn't take an argument, so it just ignores it. Cool. So um, we're down to 101 characters. Um, I mean, I think the map makes sense here because we're just overwriting it. This part here, if we put that into a function, would that even save us characters? I can put this in the while. Like, uh, that? That's not, could I use the comma operator? No. Yeah, let's let's see what happens if we try to make this a for loop. We we have plenty. Of, we have six minutes, so uh, I'm gonna. Uh, this this solution is pretty good. 101 characters is is the thing to beat. Um. So. Oh. Wait, could I do? No, I can't do that. Okay, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna turn this into a for because a for loop has a lot of stuff, right? We can use. Um, we can. We want while that, and then that. No, that breaks it. What happens here? Thirty-five. <laughs> do we want this first? So we have no initial variable. We says we say l equals. Well, I guess I guess I guess I don't need. I can put it inside. If I put it inside the for loop, that actually makes sense. That should work. Yeah. We're still at 101 characters though. Um, why is there a print? So this is one shorthand uh, that coding game gives you. This is a console log, but print is the. It's been aliased, so it's a little bit shorter than console log. We save characters. I mean, honestly, I like this as a while loop. Put line two in the for loop. Oh, that'll save us a line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this. That's 100 characters. Well, actually, no. If we put it here, we're at 100. Um, That that won't work, will it? No, because it is undefined, yeah. Mm. I mean, Andrew did it in 100, but did he just take my solution? <laughs> I'm, I, I might as, honestly, I might as well just, um, just submit. Yeah, that, that semicolon has to be there. R equals read line, and then invoke it. That'll get. I think that'll give us extra characters, though, or will it? I don't know. I think I'm gonna go ahead and submit. Someone got it in seventy six. Nicholas, Nicholas did it in seventy six characters. All right. I mean. We, I feel like if we had a running sum, instead of summing it all up at the end, I don't know. Crimson, thank you for that tier two resub. Hi, hi. Um, uh, I'm just going to go with what I got because I can't think of anything else, and I think it would be cheating if I did anything else. <laughs> Those duplicated splits, do you think I could have... Um, not done this. Remove the times equals. 
Oh, you're totally right. I could have got it in 99 because we're mapping anyway. So it should, it should just be, uh, yeah, we're mapping and storing it back in S. So it's just S at I times V. I could have got it in 99 characters. Dang. Dang. All right. Uh, Nicolas, if you could. And so <laughs> Kadera's got it in 73. 73 characters. Uh, uh, Nicolas, if you could, if you're watching, you may have just found me on Coding Game. But if you're watching, click share code so we can take a look at how you did it. And uh, we'll look at how uh, Kadera's did it in 73 characters. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they put it into a function. I think this makes sense. So read it in and split it. That absolutely helps. Because then you can just, now R is all in one go, read it in and split it. So ignore the first line. Our total sum starts off as zero. Um, our array of items is the, the reading the line once. And then for every item, um, we add that to the sum. So current value times uh, the array at i. This works? Don't look at mine. Did you just copy mine, Andrew? <laughs> um, trying to figure out how this works. So in is the current value on the current line that we're on. We're multiplying that times Oh, wait, does this work because there's only ever two lines? What happens if there's... Oh, wait, 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 wait. For the problem description, uh, the dot product can't happen with more than two coordinates, right? That's why it's always... We didn't even need a while loop. We didn't even need a while loop. There was always two lines, right? <laughs> you can't, I, well, actually, could, could you dot product three different coordinates? I don't know. Math people, help me. No, two, two vectors, yeah. Yeah, for vectors of the same size, but could you do, the, you couldn't do the dot, could you do the dot product of three vectors, four vectors? Yeah, and I like that's why this works is because there are um, um, there's only two lines, <laughs> so we didn't need the while loop. This this actually Doc mentioned this could be this could have been shortened even more. Like you could have put uh, s equals zero inside of here. Um, you probably could have done that inside of here. That's crazy. That's crazy. I see. So you can dot product more than two vectors, but for this specific solution, all over this problem, all of the examples they gave us only had two vectors. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm I know it's accumul it's accumulative, but this code right here is what threw me off because it's only multiplying it times the previous one, and we're not reassigning a. So, yeah. But great job, great job, uh, Kataraz. Um. I wished they would have given us uh, problems that had more than just two vectors, but that's okay. Uh, and Nicolas did it in 76 characters. Let's see how they did it. Uh, read it, split it. We have our sum, exact same thing. Yeah, so they use the fact that there are only ever two vectors in Iwenjo. Uh, if you want to click share code, Iwenjo, we can see show how you did it. I want to see how Andrew did it. Um, because it's probably my solution exactly. <laughs> he took my solution and he submitted it before me as my own. That's fine. Good job. Good job. Um, <laughs> let's see how Sky Hooper did or Sky Hopper did it in eighty-two characters. Um, yeah. Again, if you assumed, if you assumed that there were only ever two input vectors, you would have had a much easier time shortening this thing. Okay, great job, everybody. Let's do another one. Another one. I think this will be the last one because I, I need to eat lunch and I, I might code one more thing after this. We'll see. But uh, we are going to do reverse mode. 
I will let you solve this in any programming language you want. But this one is interesting because uh, there will be no problem description. You will be shown the inputs and expected outputs. And you have to, yeah. I did say I was going to build an app in 30 minutes or it's free. Um, but I might just go eat lunch instead. Uh, but you're given the inputs, the expected outputs, and you have to write the code that would make that work, given those inputs and outputs. So that's what we're going to do. Here we go. Here is the link. Click it if you dare. And uh, join the lobby, and you can uh, you can join in on this clash. There's a guy that has a crazy code golf language. I'm not. I'm not familiar. Is uh th th yeah. This is fastest and reverse mode. So the first person to solve it wins. But also, there's no problem description. So there's an added level of complexity. All right. Are we ready? Uh, it's not, no, this is not shortest. This is reverse mode. I'll show you. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So there is no problem description. Oh, what's on that video? Uh, mods, if you check it out, you can let me know if I can click on it. But there's no problem description. You see the input and you see the output. The input, the output. Input, output. Input, output. Input, output. Input, output. <laughs> um, are these operations that are happening on this thing? This is a keyboard being pressed. Wait, is this hex? Is this hex code into uh, hex to decimal? Let's see. What is Q thirty nine in, in decimal? Um, oh, no, no, I guess the opposite. What is 74? <laughs> it's not hex. Okay. Um, 74. Base 16 is 4A, which is not right. Um, what about base 8? 32? 2A? No. Okay. Um, A1. A1 sauce. 64. <laughs> what, what, what does it mean? Why does F4 equal Q30? Wait. Oh, these two have the same output. That's interesting. So F4 is 74. Q39 is 74. I mean, does that mean that F is 7? And Q3 is the same as F? Are they ASCII codes? Mr. Papaya got it. I have no idea what we're looking at. <laughs> I haven't seen this stuff before. Um, I'm just going to search the web for A1 is 64. Geometric sequence? Oh, no, no, no. no. This is like A subscript one. Um. A1, 64. That's not going to help. <laughs> A1 decodes to 64. Wait, is it is it base 64? Why didn't I think of that? It is ASCII? ASCII code table. Is it the ASCII value of each one added together? I bet that's what it is. Um, 
So if we look at the ASCII value of A, that is what, 60, 60? Um, capital A. Uh, in decimal is 65. And then the ASCII value of one um, is 49. Um, that's unfortunate. I'm going to delete your message just so you don't, just so people don't type that in because <laughs> it could be a, you could convince people to type that in the terminal and don't do that. Um, lowercase subtract uppercase add the ASCII value to the number. Is that really it? Uppercase add one to what the value A is. So the value of A is 65. It's uppercase. So we subtract and we get 64. Um, the value of F is uppercase, and it's 70, so we subtract, no, we add 4. That doesn't work, because <laughs> we have 74. Um, Oh, is, is it always just subtraction? Even odd, so F is 70. And then we add four to it. Um, Q is uh, 113, so 113. And so then we subtract 39 because it's lowercase? Yeah, and that's what uh, Balut just did. And then T is uh, 116. 116, well, now that's adding it. So if the number afterwards is odd, subtract it. If the numbers afterwards is even, add it that is it that's what we have to do <laughs> so 39 is odd subtract it from the character code value of q uh, 8 is even add it to the character co code value of t um okay so let's just let's just write the code um we need to split it into a number and anything that's not a, a number i guess so um we'll use a regular expression for that So we're gonna have the, uh, or is it always just one character? I guess it's always just the first character, and then and then you have the number afterwards. So like the percent sign, yeah, just like the yeah, we'll, we'll just do the first character. Okay, so we read in the input. Um, we'll say the uh, ASCII value is input at zero dot char code. Was it is it char code? Does that give us the ASCII code in uh, JavaScript? So um, char code at zero, 65, great. So that gives us the character code. And then um, the uh, number is going to be uh, get rid of the first value and then turn that into a number. So we'll slice off the character, turn it into a number. And we'll say if number uh, mod two is equal to zero, if it's even, then we add it. Is that what we decided? Yeah, so if it's even, then we're just going to console.log uh, ASCII value plus the number. Um, otherwise, we're going to log the ASCII value minus the number. And we're done. It took us that long to figure out. <laughs> Alrighty, submit. I didn't like that one. That, I mean, yeah, we eventually figured it out. I guess I'm just not that good with patterns. I need to eat lunch. I don't know. <laughs> one more. Um, maybe, maybe. All right, let's see how Mr. Papaya did it in Python. 
Uh, I mean, that's I mean that's the main part of the problem there is figuring out what is the pattern of what we're trying to solve. Oh no, I haven't eaten the lunch. I had a small snack earlier. All right, uh, read in the input. Were we given multiple inputs? I don't know. Uh, turn it into uh, the ASCII value. So uh, the what is it? What does ORD stand for? Ordinal. But this does the same thing as char code app in, uh, in JavaScript. Ordinance, that's the one. So find the ordinance of that character, which is the ASCII value. Um, then we, oh, I see, that's, that's what this is doing. So this reads in, uh, this is really interesting. So that input reads in the line. The comma separator here, this is kind of like the 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 rest operator. So C is going to be the first character that comes from that input, and then R is going to be the rest. Uh, Drop Mania official. Thank you for that prime sub. Very much appreciated. Um, yeah. So that's awesome. This is the it's the rest. Take the rest and put it in R. Um, and then X is the rest joined back together as an parsed as an integer. And then we see is X even if it is, um, make it negative and then just print the ASCII value plus that value. Great job, Mr. Papaya, who did it in two minutes and 23 seconds. Uh, Aspace uh, did it in JavaScript. Let's take a look. So. Um, grab the first character from the input, use char code at to get the ASCII value. Um, take the rest of it and parse it to a number. That's what I did. And then we have our logic. If that number is even, add it. If it's not, or if it's odd, subtract it. Great job. And then has own property, did it with Ruby. Let's take a look. Uh, we chomp, 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 chomp. So that reads the input in. It looks like uh, character types in Ruby have an ordinance property, which actually just gives you back uh, the ASCII code. So that's awesome. Um, and then this is some interesting syntax, but this basically takes the rest of the input string. So it says start at the first indice uh, of the input string and grab the rest of them. That's going to give us um, a string. Basically, this is like slicing off the first value. Turn that into a to an integer, and then look at this. Numbers have properties in Ruby. <laughs> so if in is odd, um, uh, then we subtract it. Otherwise, we add it. Ruby is crazy, crazy. Um, yeah. So in in JavaScript, this is how we would have done what we saw earlier in Python with the R star. But in JavaScript, you could do a similar thing, but you do it this way, where um, read line returns an array, and then we destructure that array. So the the first element in the array gets put into a variable called char, and then the rest gets put into a variable called number. Uh, very similar. Uh, this is like doing a slice. Awesome. All right. Should we do one more? No, I'm going to build an app in 15 minutes or less. That's what we're going to do. Um, that's what I'm going to leave you with. We're going to build an app. What kind of app do we build? I think I have a list of some things somewhere. Did I say 15? Yeah, 15 minutes or it's free. We're going to build an app in 15 minutes or less or it's free. Um... Something with Sakadeo. I mean, we could do something with the Twitch chat. What could we do with the Twitch chat in 15 minutes or less? What is, what is something? What's free? <laughs> That's the joke. I don't know. Uh, in the U.S., the uh, pizza delivery restaurants, specifically Domino's, used to say if it's not delivered in 30 minutes or less, you get the pizza for free. They stopped doing that because it resulted in reckless driving. But I'm just making a joke on that. Like, if I don't solve, if I don't finish it in 30 minutes, you get it for free. It's already free because the stream is free, right? I mean, some of you pay. You don't have to. Um, I can't. It needs to be something I can do in 15 minutes. <laughs> I realize that that you all aren't aren't. Um, 
you don't know how to gauge if I can do something in 15 minutes, which is totally fine. And uh, poly, poly, polite music. Thanks for being here. Hello. Reckless coding. <laughs> I could do video chat. You know what? I might just do this. I might just do this because I could definitely do that in 15 minutes. The thing is, um, I want to do something with Twitch chat maybe. Yeah, but let me just look at Pure JS. I haven't looked at it in a while. I know it got updated at one point. And someone provides a free signaling server. So, uh, yeah. If you don't want to run your own Pure server, we offer a free cloud hosted version of Pure server, the official Pure server. If you don't specify the host and the key, you'll automatically connect to the cloud servers. Huh. Huh. Let's make a video chat web page. <laughs> I could do that in 15 minutes. I actually could uh, using using this library. I mean, I actually haven't used this. Like, I, I researched this library because I was looking into different solutions, but... Uh, yeah, you just add it to the page. Uh, we could create. You could create a room that has a unique ID and then share the link with someone to join that. Yeah, that's the thing. And, and this uses WebRTC under the hood. If I was just going to do WebRTC, I might use Simple Peer. This one's a bit trickier because this doesn't handle uh, a lot of stuff. Like you have to handle uh, signaling and stuff like that. Yeah. Could you do this with Socket.io? Uh, you, you, the signaling part, the part that connects the two peers together happens with Socket.io. Jeopardy for Twitch. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll click on it. You mentioned earlier that you made this. Um, let's look at the code. So we have a WebSocket server. Oh, interesting. Simon White similar. So are you looking at the similarity of people's answers just to say that it's correct even if it's maybe a little bit off is that what you're doing there that's interesting uh where where do you um where do you get your questions from jservice.io nice so Je there's an api where you can get jeopardy questions that's pretty cool awesome okay <laughs> what do we do? Uh, I have I actually haven't done any any .NET Core on my stream. I probably will at some point. <laughs> I, I always say that and I never do. <laughs> are we gonna what are we gonna vote on? Um, use the GitHub API. Um, what is something that happens in the Twitch chat often? Because we could build something related to that. People type one in the Twitch chat. That's a thing. Um, people say hello. People spam emotes. They troll. This is true. <laughs> I know something that gets the picture of a book and recognizes the title and gives it back to you. I need to research this. I don't know of any libraries, but I know that Google Lens will do this. And they probably have some APIs you could call. But if you look up Google Lens, what happened to my hair? I don't know. <laughs> People try to cross this group. That's true. You know what? What if I just end the stream? What if, what if, what if that? Um... No. I mean, honestly, we, we could, I could, I could copy paste this code and we could build a video chat app. <laughs> code a bot. Twitch chat sentiment analysis. I kind of like that. Uh, do we have a sentiment? Analysis uh, API. Live my best life. Thank you, uh, Velvet Velvetosic. <laughs> I 
uh, JavaScript sentiment analysis. I think this would, this would be interesting. It reads in all of the chats and then uh, has a collective sentiment over the last five minutes and it shows like a smiley face or a frowny face in the corner. Um, ML, uh, ML5 JS sentiment analysis. Um, well, I mean, I really just want to go to ML5. A toxicity rating? Uh, so, uh, not for images, for text, sentiment. Sentiment is a model trained to predict the sentiment of any given text. The default model currently movie reviews is trained using IMDB reviews that have been truncated to a maximum of 200 words. Only the 20,000 most used words in the reviews are used. Um, well, thank you, Shark Turnup. <laughs> so create a sentiment using the movie reviews model and then predict the sentiment. What does our output look like? Uh, let's just do it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to make this... I was going to say 15-minute coding challenge. It, it's going to take me longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I think what I'll do is I'll have a running string that is the sum total of all the chats that have happened, and that will be, I don't know, 500 characters long, and so it'll be like a rolling sentiment analysis of the last few chats. So here we go, 15 minute coding challenge. Uh, let's make let's try to make this into a YouTube video, I guess. Um, here we go. Uh, here, here, here we go. <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, in this coding challenge, I am going to attempt to do some sentiment analysis on Twitch chat messages. So uh, I'm going to use ML5.js. They have this wonderful sentiment analysis uh, model ready to go, already trained. Uh, it was trained on movie reviews, but we're going to pass Twitch chats into it and get back the sentiment. Um, and we'll have like a running a running total sentiment. So like the last 10 chat messages will get a sentiment score and then we'll display that on the screen. Maybe we'll show a happy face or a frowny face depending on that. But yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, to listen to Twitch chat, we're gonna use TMIJS, which is a really simple library. Uh, let's write the code, let's go. Here we go. Uh, Twitch chat sentiment. Am I spelling sentiment right? Sentiment. Sen sentiment. <laughs> Let's get sentiment. <laughs> that's what I was, that's how I was spelling it. Uh, sen sen sentiment. All right. Uh, in crimson with the focus mode. Uh, let's, let's go into focus mode. Quick eight minutes, eight minute focus mode. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna open this up with VS code. We'll create our, this is just going to be, it's going to be running on a web page and this web page will be loaded as a browser overlay so you can like put it on the screen. Um, but basic web page. And for now, we'll just have an H1 with a, a smiley, a smiley face in it. Cool. All right. Now uh, we need, what did I just do? Don't. Don't do that. We need some JavaScript. The JavaScript is going to use TMIJS um, to connect to the Twitch chat. And then we'll read in the messages. And as we get the messages, we'll, we'll pass them through ML5.js. So this is the code we need to connect to Twitch chat. Um, we're going to do that here. Uh, it, this doesn't require any tokens or auth or anything like that. We actually can just pass in. Uh, the channel we want to listen to messages on. If we wanted to send messages in the chat, that would require a token, but uh, if, for read only, this is all we need. Um, and that should be good. We should at least see the messages from the Twitch chat. So let me start this up with a static file server. And if you send a chat message, it's going to show up in the console here. Oh, no, it's not, because we don't have TMIJS. We should get an error. TMI is not defined. Also, we're not even adding the script tag yet, so there's a lot we need to do. First of all, reference the script that we just wrote. Um, then we get the error, TMI is not defined because we need to actually add the TMIJS library. Uh, I'm just gonna grab it from GitHub. 
Yeah. We <laughs> I did we did the TMIJS thing uh earlier with that video that I played for you. Okay, so we want this one. We want the minified uh, stuff. Let me just download this. This is fine. Everything's fine. We'll be done soon. Um, we're going to put that in here, in, in here, in here. <laughs> this is not a replay. No, this is live. This is live right now. <laughs> Okay, so um, all I did there was I downloaded TMI.js uh, into this folder so that way I can link it as well. So I'll add that link right here. And now TMI is defined. And if you say things in the chat, you'll see them appear here. And you really will see them appear here because it's live. Uh, have I ever heard of or tried the game Screeps? I have not. Uh, but uh, sh can we get a shout out for Brooke Zerker? Because he's played that on stream before. I don't know if he's done it recently, but uh, but he has played uh, Screeps on stream. I've never played it. Didn't seem too interesting to me. I don't know. I don't know if I will. Yeah, but check out Brooke Zerker for sure. He does a lot of Rust and other cool stuff. Hey, Anna Codes. Things are going pretty good. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're listening to Twitch chat. Great, 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 great. Now let's get some sentiment. Let's let's do some sentiment analysis on every message that comes through. Um, but I think I do want to do like a running total of the past few messages. So we need ML5JS. Uh, let's look at their getting started. Uh, we add the script from a CDN. So um, when I added TMI, I actually just downloaded it into this folder and then added it. I technically, if I could have found it on a CDN, I could have linked to it as well. But in this case, we're linking to ML5 on a CDN. Technically, we could have downloaded it in the same way that we did uh, TMI. So now that we have ML5, uh, we can try using it. So this is the code we need. right about here. So um, we'll have our model ready function. Um, we'll have our sentiment. And then this is how we do the prediction. So um, I'm just going to have a global variable right here that says like uh, is ready starts off as false, but then when the model is ready, we'll say uh, is ready is true. Um, I mean, I kind of want to do this. <laughs> so I want to do this. Um, and then in this little callback function, we'll just set is ready to true. Uh, and then whenever we get a Twitch chat message right here, um, we're going to get the sentiment. So how do we get the sentiment? We say uh, sentiment.predict and pass in the text. So I uh, will say if uh, is ready. So if the model is ready and loaded, then we can actually use it. I should be able to predict. I'll pass in the message that the user sent. And then we get their message and their and the prediction. We need to figure out what this prediction looks like. Um, it's going to be an array of values or something like that. Let's let's see. So here we go. So it's loading the model behind the scenes. The model's loaded, should be at least at this point. And then when somebody sends a message, it's going to run the sentiment analysis on their messages. <laughs> I am not happy. There we go. So this has, uh, it just has a score. Yeah, so um, Happy Friday gets a score of 0.99. Rip. <laughs> gets, I guess you can't see this. Let me move this up a little bit. Uh, ah, gets a score of 0.48. Am I happy? Gets a point of a uh, score of 0.98. Cool. Yes, 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 yes. Let's see what that gets scored. Re is a 0.65. Yes. Surprisingly, it only gets a 0.42. I'm a nice person, I swear. 0.98. Free beer. 0.65. Sad. 0.5. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how how accurate this is, but we're gonna use it. So here's what we're going to do. So uh, right now, we're basically, we're getting the, the sentiment and, oh, terrible day. Look, that's a 0% on the, on the score. Wow. Okay. But this is uh, analyzing each individual message 
what I want to do is I want like a running total of like the last, I don't know, 20 messages, and then we average that out. Something like that. Okay, I'm gonna comment this out for now so it, it uh, it, this was really slowing down the browser because I was logging so much and uh, predicting so much. Um, but here's what I want to do. We're gonna have a scale of happy faces. Um, and we, we wanna go from the saddest face, probably like crying. Uh, to the absolute happy f happiest face, which technically is crying as well, but it's like a joyful cry. Which one is it? Um, this one. Yeah, so this is like sad cry. This is happy cry. Um, maybe we, maybe we don't do that. So for hat, let's. What's the happiest one? This one. This one. Or is it happier if your eyes are closed? So like, this is even happier. And he's showing his, his teeth. Yeah, that's the happiest. This is a little less happy. Um, I guess we could do, yeah, there, there is like heart eyes happy. I don't know, this is a problem in and of itself, ranking emotes in terms of their happiness level. All right, and then we need like a neutral face. Um, I mean, eventually we're going to need the, the sad frowny face. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's going to come eventually. There's definitely some in between. Isn't there? Yeah, there is a neutral face like that. I don't know. Yeah, that's the one, the neutral face. I think I think we got to we got to to make this reasonable. Um we won't do anything with like the heart eyes or the star eyes. I think I think this is this is what we'll do. So, uh there's a little a smaller sad face and then I think there's a sad face with like eyes closed. Oh, that's a really sad face. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. Um There's like a, yeah, like a, what's the difference between these two? Five are enough? Okay, well, what's the saddest possible face? This one. There we go. So we have really sad, frowny sad, neutral, Happy, or really happy. There we go. These are these are all the possible faces. Yeah, too happy, too sad, one neutral. Okay, so uh, we also need a running total of the sentiments of the last thirty messages or so. So let's just say like the um, sentiment sentiments is an array, um, and then uh, each time we get a sentiment, um, yeah. So we make the prediction. And then we do uh, sentiments. We'll push that score into the sentiment. So sentiments dot push uh, prediction dot score. So that that's just going to be a big array of all the all the sentiments. But we only want the last thirty of them. I like mangoes. Nice. Me too. Um, so we can say sentiments. Dot. We want a copy of the array. We're pushing into the end, so can't can't we do like negative thirty? Does that work? <laughs> if if an array is length thirty one, this will give us the last thirty items, right? I hope that works. Should be fine. Um, yeah, and so now that we have the last thirty sentiment scores, we just we just find the average of it. Um, uh, sentiments dot, oh, let's create a function called average with this, with the array of sentiments and then, um, averaging is fun. We just sum it all together and divide it by the length. So we'll just say values dot reduce each, uh, we have the sum, we have the value, we want sum plus value and then divide that whole thing by values dot length. There we go. That's the average. 
Um, and this is it. We're done. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, this is values.roos. Thank you. Thank you, I'm uh, Otter. Or I am Otter. Taking the medium might give better results. Okay, <laughs> regardless, uh, this should do it. And I guess we do, yeah, this is just gonna give us the running total. That's it, we're done, okay. Um, so, if you send messages in the Twitch chat, we're gonna see the sentiment pop up and we should see the like the rolling values. So with two messages, we're at point three. Let's try to, let's make it happy, make it really happy. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's, I guess you could make it sad. Uh, uh, Techie TV, thank you for that prime sub. Or Techie, Techie, thank you very much. We're going up, everybody. Yeah, get happy, get happy. We're at a we're at a point five right now. We need to get to a point nine nine. We are happy. Say this is great. Things are awesome. <laughs> there we go. So we're at point six. Awesome. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think all we have to do now is um, wonderful day. Wow, yeah, we're at 0.77. Ah! <laughs> all we have to do now is we have to map this value uh, to the array of smileys, right? This is so amazing. Love life. Great. Great. <laughs> Extra mega happy. All right, uh, our timer's up, but I think I think we basically have it. Um, uh, here's all we got to do. Actually, I mean, this sentiment analysis is, with all of the Twitch chats coming through, is really slowing down the web page like a whole lot. But that's okay. Uh, now all we got to do to get the current smiley is we just we we take the average and then we map it into the length of the number of smileys. So uh, the current smiley is going to be uh, math dot floor of the average times the length. Because if it's 0 0.99, if the average sentiment is 0 0.99, and we multiply that by five, we're gonna get 4.99. So, so, wait, wait, this should, honestly, this should work. Tell me, uh, tell me this, this is all we need. I think that's all we need. <laughs> I think it's, and this is, this is what we need. Um, because that's going to give us a value between zero and length minus one. Um, and then uh, we'll say set current smiley. The audio should still be there. Okay, uh, with smile or faces. There. Trailing semicolon on the last. Oh, wait, what? I think I was just scrolled. Um, yeah, it was just scrolled. Okay. Uh, yes, now we just need to set the smiley. Let's give this an ID. Current smiley. And then we just need to set it. So here in uh, Current, set current smiley, we get the uh, smiley, and we just need to set it. So I'm gonna query selector the current smiley and set its text content to be the smiley. That's it, that's all, we're done. Okay, so, uh, and I guess I'm, I'm not console logging anymore, so we should be good. So now, when we go here, it starts off as a happy face, and then if you start sending messages, <laughs> it should change. And there might be an error in the console. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went down. It went back up. <laughs> I think I, I kind of... The thing is, the, the messages are coming in so fast that it's really, really slowing it down. Um... Here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put this in an overlay. <laughs> we're 
I'm gonna put it in overlay and just hope that it doesn't crash OBS. That's the plan. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have a feeling that ML5 uses web workers. We'll see. Uh, JSP87, thank you very much for that prime resub. Uh, here we go. We're going to add it as an overlay. Sentiment analysis. Uh... Yeah, there it is. So we're going to... Oh, I guess I... Oh, didn't mean, did not mean to do that. Um, so it's it's neutral face, and OBS hasn't crashed yet. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna assume that it's just working. Oh, he's get, he's getting happy. Look at him. Look how happy he is. Um, actually, let me let me adjust this uh, properties. We'll do like 200 by 200, and then now, yeah, we can we can make him bigger. So your goal is to make me happy. So say happy things in the chat and I will smile. And then I'm going to end the stream. <laughs> happy puppies, rainbows. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, oh, there we go. It's based on movie reviews. So if you just say, uh, this movie was great, five stars, it should go up. Awesome. Okay, now let's let's make me <laughs> let's make me frown. So if you say this movie was horrible, bad movie, do not recommend. It should go. It, oh, oh, we got like the most excited. It should go back down to like super super sad, horrible. This movie sucks. <laughs> it takes a while to catch up. Oh no, we're not the saddest yet. We can get even sadder. Oh, there we go. <laughs> For a split second. Oh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I'm curious what will happen if everyone just types one in chat. If you just type one in chat, let's see what the sentiment of what it thinks your sentiment is. <laughs> Maybe, oh, that might be, uh, that might be like one star. Type five, type five in the chat. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to end I'm gonna end the stream there. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, I'll probably upload this to YouTube. You can see the code is, uh, like, extremely simple. Just listen for messages, get the sentiment analysis, and then uh, have a running total of them. Yeah, well, I guess I'll leave my, my face on. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't hear the fans on my streaming computer, and it seems like OBS is doing fine, so should be fine. Um, alrighty, everyone, you're great. I appreciate you. We got a ton of support today. Tons of subs, tons of bits. I appreciate you all. Uh, we're going to raid someone. I don't know who we're going to raid, but wherever we go, show them lots of love. Uh, drop a follow if you like what they're doing, all that good stuff. Yeah, and, and thank you, uh, Chubba Goose. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Cypher and Az Azunigas and Velvet. Yeah, I appreciate you all. Okay, uh, the next stream right now is planned for Friday. I might stream before then, but these days I'm busy with work. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. So <laughs> tune in at least next Friday. We'll have more fun just like this. Yeah, today is Friday, but next Friday. All right, uh, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this.